What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. Today we have, what if Issei finally lost it, the 20,000 subscriber special. Rias tells Issei the truth about everything by mistake because he was afraid to confess. He flew away and somehow managed to gain a new power. Let's try to hit 500 likes for this video. If you guys want to know directly when I upload or my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 1 unstable. Issei, who am I to you? Well, you're the president and you're such an asshole. Rhea slaps Issei hard enough to leave three cuts on his face. But president, what did I- You dense idiot, Akino says. I don't know much about romance, but even I know what was happening, Zenovia adds in. Guys, what did I do wrong? Come on, man. Can you really not tell? Kiba says. Issei, you're such a jerk, Azia adds in. You're the worst, Konika says. Gasper, do, do you hate me too? Kind of, Gasper replies. Issei looks at Rias. President, I... Rias lost whatever self-control she had left. I should have let Rainier kill you twice! Rias, now realizing what she said, covers her mouth and tears stream down her face. What? Issei's face went from confused to hurt and shocked. What did you mean by that? Rias, I'm... I'm sorry. Rhea stormed out of the door in club room, leaving Issei with the others. His cuts were bleeding, but he didn't even notice. Issei looks at the others. What did she mean by that? Ross Weiser replies, I don't really know. Who is Rainer? Ravel says, I feel like this is my fault. Akana replies and says, no, it's not. Stop ignoring me and answer my question. What did she mean by letting Rainer kill me? Issei raised his voice and it scares the hell out of the other three. Were in, they were truly terrified. Akino, Konoko, and Kiba can't look him in the eyes. You three, looks like you know what she meant. Issei slowly releasing a dangerous and toxic aura that forced one of them to speak up. Because she knew about Rainer hunting you. And let her kill you, Kiba says. Akino, so that she could add you to her parage and help break off the engagement. Guys, what the hell? Irina says, Issei was completely unstable. His aura was in a state of flux, but it was nothing compared to his emotions. He's hyperventilating, and too many expressions on his face to tell what's happening to him, but it was easy to guess. Irina tried to calm him down. Issei, you need to calm down, Irina says. She hugged him, but pushed him over the edge. He freaked out, and Irina was pushed away by forcing his powers flaring. Issei? Irina says. Stay away from me, all of you. I can't take it anymore. It's one lie after another. Issei was now shaking and having muscle spasms. His heart beat at an all-time high, which obviously increased his blood pressure to a point where his eyes were bloodshot, and he had a nosebleed. Zenovia jumped in and so did Ross Voisa. Ravel and Irina too. They all held him down and tried to calm him down. Azza used her twilight healing hoping to contain his blood pressure but none of it worked. Issei pushed everyone off of him and looked at those who lied to him with such fury and they actually lost all feelings in their legs. Gasper hid in his box and Azia behind the couch. Issei's tears mixed with blood and from his cuts on his face stung him. He touched his face and felt the blood strain in his hands. After everything I did and went through, this is what I get in return, Issei subconsciously enters his balance breaker. Everyone keep your distance, he's too unstable, Issei please calm down, Drake says. Like hell, Drake, Issei bursts through the window and flies away, reaching supersonic speed as he gained altitude. Back at the club room, Akino, Konako, and Kiba just look at now the broken window when the felt... The menacing glares coming from the others. Ross Vices says, You guys let him die? Akino, not being able to look at her or anyone in the eye, replied, Yes. Wh why would you let my childhood friend die? Irina says. I want to know how, Zenovia says as well. Yeah, we owe you guys that much, Kiba replies. Kiba tells them everything about Issei being a target because of his sacred gear and the fallen attacking him, then Rias reincarnating him. Azia. You don't know what else he has endured soon after. He took a light spear three times from me after you made him a devil. When, Konako asked, Azia, once in the chest when we met twice and in the legs after my sacred gear was forcibly removed. I was on the verge of death, but I opened my eyes and saw him taking on Rainer all on his own. He cried for me when he was hellbent on avenging me. We didn't, Akino says. Did you know about me being target too? Issei did tell you guys about me, so would that help? Yeah, he told us, Kiba said. 
And you guys let Big Sis Asia die too? Gasper replied. Kiba, Konako, and Nagano had their eyes covered by their hair. I'm going to look for Issei. Anyone want to help? Ross Vaisa said. I'm in. I can't stand being in the same room as then, Irina replied. Gasper, Zenovia, Ozzy, and Ravel all leave to look for Issei. He may have flown at supersonic speeds, but he could still be tracked. Back with Rias after she ran away. Scene break. Rhea's still walking in the hallway of the school building when she heard the sonic boom that cracked some of the windows. When she looked out the window and saw a glimpse of Issei and his balance breaker flying at supersonic speeds, she could feel his power going wild. She placed her hand on the window cracks and felt something moist. She even looked at it and saw blood, Rhea said. She thought that she cut herself when she touched the crack but found no cuts on her fingers. When she realized something, it was the same hand that she slapped Issei in with the blood in the windows cracks it was in. Issei, what have I done? Rhea says. Now we're back with Issei. He was regretting everything. So much he hate, especially about how he let himself fall for someone who used him. The memories were flashing in his mind. Issei had reached the very edge of Japan in mere moments, and luckily it was desolate. Issei still in his balance breaker landed on a cliff and wasn't doing any better than earlier. Issei looked at the sea and formed several dragon shots. He fires one after another, and some hit the sea miles off a stone. It's almost as if atom bombs were being tested. The shockwaves created small earthquakes. Issei fires some into the sky as they travel all the way to the moon. They hit the surface and small but visible new craters formed. He then boosted his new full limit and fired off one of his biggest dragon shots off at the life straight into space. He was now completely drained both physically and emotionally. Eventually, he stopped and deactivated his balance breaker. He looked at the cliff and wanted to jump. Just before he could walk over the edge, his knees lost their strength to support him and Issei fell off them. He looked at the ocean and let all of his emotions. He wailed and his voice was carried out into the sea. The screams of betrayal and his heartbreak was dwarfing the sound of the sea itself. Almost as if his mother nature herself gave a few moments before silence let him vent. Issei then cried. All of his memories, Rias, Akino, Konako, and Kiba racing through his very being. The ones who helped him, saved him, trained with him, laughed with him, were the ones who destroyed his life in the name in the first place. They used him and toyed with his emotions the whole time. At least Rainer was honest about her intentions. She made his last day a good one despite her being a bloodthirsty bitch. Issei, they really are devils and now I'm going to be stuck being one of them. Partner. Drake said, Yeah? Issei replied, For the first time in my long life, I have no words to bring any comfort. I apologize, said Drake. It's fine, Drake. I need to be alone. Please. Drake said, I understand. Issei lay there crying to the point where enough his tears turned to dirt to mud. After a while, he just lay there in silence for a remainder of the day. Little did he know that Ross Faisa, Irina, and Zenovia, Gasper, Ravel, and Azia had teleported to him earlier just... When he started firing dragon shots, the whole scene was just too much. Irina and Azina tried to go to him, but Zenovia and Ross Vice stopped them. They gave the two a look that begged them to stop. Irina and Azina just stood there and watched Issei vent his emotions. His mind and emotional state was in complete disarray. The girls and Gasper just watched him lay emotionless. Well, into the night. Eventually, he passed out his blood pressure dropped considering how high it was not too long ago. They all watched him and thought about what he was going through. Ross Visa. So Rainer, aka his first love, played with his emotions and killed him. And the woman he loves now, the one who let it happen and used him for her personal gain then completely broke him with one sentence just because he was too afraid to confess? Anything I missed? Irina? No. That's just the gist of it, Irina said. You know, that's what I think about it. He never once made a move on me, or any of us, after he clearly knew we wanted him. Every time I looked into his eyes, I saw fear. Fear that completely overshadowed his desires, and now, after what he just experienced, I'm afraid that he won't be happy, optimistic Issei. We all know and love, Zenovia says. Azia then started to cry. And we fanned the flames by being conceited, Azia says. We never once looked into why he was so afraid, Gasper replied. I never even thought that someone, as kind and as happy as him, suffered so much, Ravel replied. We are horrible friends, Irina said. Some of her white angel feathers turned black. Irina, stop. We are all to blame. We will fix this together. If we can, Irina replies. 
They all look at Issei, who is still laying motionless, and when they thought it was safe to get any closer, they moved in hoping to take him back and help him. They looked at him and saw him crying in his sleep, twitching from the nightmares that he was clearly having, cuts on his face still fresh. Azia immediately began to heal the cuts, but in instinct, Issei opened his eyes and jumped away from everyone still breathing heavily. He was once again in full panic, looking at everyone simultaneously while keeping distance. Big brother, it's us, Gasper replies. Issei and his state barely recognized them. Irina tried to get closer. Stay back, Issei said. Issei summoned his gauntlet, prepared a dragon shot. Ross Vaisa immediately put a powerful shield. Issei launched it and hit the ground near the shield. The edge of the cliff began to collapse and he happened to be on the part of. The cliff of the... The cliff edge gave away, and Issei began to fall into the water. The other immediately tried to catch him, but it was useless. Gasper tried to freeze time, but couldn't focus. Too much adrenaline going through him to let him focus. They tried to reach for his hand, only to see him not reaching out for them. His hands were on his sides. If only they reached out, if only he had reached out, they could have saved him, but clearly he didn't want to be saved. They screamed his name and divide after him only to see that Issei landed in the water surrounded by the jagged rocks. The white waters made him disappear. They dived in after him, but the waves made it impossible to find him. After searching for hours, they didn't see his body wash up anywhere. The gruesome truth was setting in. Zenobia, Issei, please come back, Issei, Azia says. Big brother, Gasper says. <sighs> Ravel says. You didn't deserve this, Issei, Rosfessa replies. No. No, Issei, Irina says. Irina screams of the open sea and with everyone started to cry. Even Ross Vaisu, who spent very little with him, still grew quite fond of him and cared for him. This is a truly dark day for everybody involved. And that concludes Chapter 1, Unstable. Chapter 2, What Are You? Everyone goes back to Ko the next morning after a fruitless search. None of them had slept. When they arrived at the school, they ignored everyone and went straight to the ORC room. They entered and found it to be empty. Kind of glad it's empty, Zenobia said. Same, replied with Irina. We just wish it was here, Gasper said. Back with Issei, Sinbri. Issei was washed up on shore and eventually woke up and was more in control. His face stung a lot from the seawater on his cuts. Issei looks around and sees that he's alone. He tries to think of where to go, but his mind is still messed up from yesterday. Issei decided to go on a walk and walked near a forest. He was too deep in thought to hear the sounds of twigs breaking behind him. Eventually, Issei's instincts kicked in, but was just not quick enough. He felt something on his right arm, and when he looked at it, it saw what looked like a skinwalker, but even more weak and skinnier than the one you usually see. Its skin was ash gray and black lines on its chest. What had a hole in it? Was that an injury? Issei asked himself. He looked at the creature in its eyes and saw no life in them. The bite only had enough force to pierce his skin, but nothing more than that. The creature let go and fell into the ground. Issei looked at it and saw that it also had horns that pointed forward. The creature then slowly started to crack like a cheap prolacine, then turned to dust. What was that thing? A skinwalker? Issei said. Looked at as he looked at the bite mark. It barely had enough strength for one less attempt at a meal. Partner, are you okay? Drake asked. Yeah, Drake, I'm okay, I guess. Issei, I think it's time we should head back to the others, Drake said. Now starting to shake at the mere mention of them. Why should I? Because you'll be marked as a stray. When you were passed out on the cliff, Azia, Irina, Zenovia, Ravel, Gasper, and Ross Vaisa came after you. They tried to help you, but in your panic state, you attacked them and fell off the cliff. Don't worry, they are not harmed. Drake, Issei, I know. You want to die after what you went through, and that's understandable, but think about those who still care. Other than those four devils, did the others ever hurt you? No, but come on, Issei, don't make them think you're dead. They don't need to suffer too. Issei hesitates at first, but reluctantly agrees. All right, Trey, let's go. Issei activates his balance breaker and flies home. After a while, he arrived but was breathing heavily after he de deactivated his balance breaker. Why am I so tired? Issei says. Go home and eat something. You expended just about all of your strength. You did leave a few new craters on the moon after all. <laughs> Issei chuckles at that. Yeah, I did. Issei goes to his house and sees his parents, and they were clearly worried about him. His mother, Miki, said, Issei, 
Where have you been? We haven't seen you since yesterday. Sorry, Mom. Something's happened and I needed to clear my head. His father, Gorokora, asked, Issei, you got hurt. The three cuts on your face. Did someone hurt you? Don't worry, Dad. I'm fine. I got hit with a thorny branch and it cut me. I'm okay, but I'm tired and just want to sleep. I'm sorry. Issei walks up into his room and cleans up. He cleans the bite marks, which he hid from his parents. He washed the cuts on his face, but when he looks in the mirror, he sees the cuts and they remind him of her. Issei then sits in the tub, sobbing. Drake's words had only brought him temporary comfort, but the effect when he, what he experienced went deeper than he could have ever imagined. Issei eventually calmed down and then felt numb inside. He was basically running on autopilot at this point. He thoughtlessly got ready for school and ate breakfast and barely spoke to his parents who had worried sick about him. He left for school and was greeted by his two friends, Matsuda and Motohama. Motohama, yo Issei, how's it going? Issei didn't respond and just kept on walking. Matsuda stopped him. Hey bro, you okay? They looked at Issei and saw something that scared him. Nothing. They saw nothing. No emotion. No response. No life left in his eyes. It's as if he was not alive anymore. Matsuda, Issei, Speak to us, man. Come on. Dude, it's us. Your friends, Motohama says. Issei's eyes now show a little bit of life. Guys? Issei replies. Both hugged him when he called out to them. The other students noticed in word and got round that Issei isn't himself. The gossip reached the ORC in minutes, and they all rushed out to see him. Rius was the first to run out the door at speeds that even surprised Kiba. Rius ran to him and saw the two guys her coming and threw that maybe Rius could snap out him out of it. She followed by everyone including Ross Visa. As soon as Rius hugged him and said his name, Issei started shaking. Let go! Issei removed himself from her embrace in a swift motion. Why? Rius says. Just stay away, Rius! Issei replies. Issei said with venom in his voice that looked like it would physically injure her, Rius stepped forward. You finally said my name! Rius said. Rius now shedding tears not only because Issei called her by name, but also because of how he said it. He didn't say it out of love, but pure hatred. He lost all love and respect for her the instant she accidentally told him that she let him die. How she let Azia die. Issei now back into his defensive and panicked position just looked like yesterday on the cliff set off alarms in everyone's head. <coughs> Everyone get to class, that's an order, we'll handle this, Ross Vipha says. Everyone goes except for the two guys. That includes you two as well, Ross Vipha says. Issei's our friend, we won't leave him like this, Motohama said. Matsuda, we can help him. Fine, Ross Vipha replies. Issei, it's us, don't you recognize us? Irina says. Irina? Yeah, it's me. She takes a step forward. Please stay back, all of you, Issei replies. Issei said in a voice that was broken. He was trembling again. Issei, we know we are in the wrong for what happened yesterday. Please let us try to make it right. Yes, that's all we ask of you. Issei, give us a chance. Issei now getting really angry. Like this so-called chance you gave me when you forced me into your shit? Why should I? You and the others knew about it. And instead of helping me and Ozzy, you let us suffer. I don't know who I can trust here. Matsuda and Motohama look at each other and then to the ORC with questioning gazes. I never meant to hurt you, Issei. It's just, Rius said. Enough of the lies, Rius. Stop lying and manipulating me. For once in your damn life, you damn bitch. I never did any of that, Issei, Rise said. Didn't I just tell you to stop lying? You let me die. You let Azia die and you could have done something about it. The two guys, what? It's not like what it sounds like, Kiba replies. No? What he said can only mean one thing, so please explain, Matsuda said. There's nothing to explain, Akuna replies. Issei spreads his wings, ready to fly away as if he sensed their intent to take him down. Matsuda and Motohama just looked at his wings and completely unable to process what they were seeing on top of everything already happening. Konako then appeared, then appeared behind them and knocked them out. Issei tackled her into a tree in retaliation. The others took the chance to restrain Issei using their own bodies. They all tackled him once into the ground and they were too strong for Issei to fight in his current state. Issei being pinned by those who lied and used him made him feel helpless just like before. Issei was trying to escape frantically, but to no avail. Eventually he stopped moving and Rias was on top of him worried sick, but then she saw his face. Please, just let me go, I can't, Issei says. 
Issei's eyes once again devoid of life, yet cried a stream of tears had dark circles and his face was pale. Rias and Akino felt like they got hit by a light spear through the chest. Konako didn't show much expression, but she was trying to control herself, and Kiba just sat down on one knee. They realized what they did. They completely broke the one who put them all together on his own. Ross Vice had put a sleep spell on Issei and knocked him out since the students were watching from the windows. They picked up. They picked up Issei and took him to the nervous office and put him onto the bed. Akino cast a spell and wiped out everyone's memory of what they just saw. Only members of the ORC and Iria knew what happened. Issei lays on the bed, and the others stayed by his side. Azia stayed on the bed with him while Iria kept holding his hand. Will he be okay? Issei Zenovia says. Issei's gauntlet appears on his arm. Like hell he will, Drake said. Drake, how is he? Rhea says. Just look at him, Gremory. How can anyone answer that? Drake says. Rhea. Has anyone told her what happened after she left? Drake said. I did. Do... Any of you also know why he, he's keeping his distance from everyone, and even those who didn't hurt him? Drake said. We have a guess, but not completely sure, Zenovia replied. I'll tell you. After Rainier used him and killed him, he developed a fear of woman, but he was on the verge of overcoming it. But still, it lingered in his heart. The reason he didn't confess yesterday was due to a few excellent reasons. Please tell me, Rhea said. First, he is definitely in love with you, but was afraid of rejection, what was completely normal considering how much he used to care. Second, he never called you by your name out of respect. You are his king, and he was afraid that if you two did have a relationship, then it would cause both of you trouble. Third, he wanted to call you by your name when you two were alone, but with so many people in your lives, you two can't be alone for 10 seconds without anyone getting between you two. A momentary of silence. But after you accidentally told him the truth, that old fear completely took over and he is now afraid of nearly woman he sees or comes near him, thus his reaction towards everyone here, Se except for Gasper. But I'm a guy, Kiba says. Did you already forget that you were part of the plan that ended up getting pierced by four light spears? He hates you too. He's going to need medita medication to calm himself, to control his health now. You promised to be his brother. Look where that got you him. If I could leave the sacred gear, I would have made you force suffer. Even the past hosts of the boost in gear have great anger directed towards you. Silence fell for five minutes. You know, I thought we lost him forever after we fell off the cliff, you say. But you did lose me forever. Issei was now awake. He sat up and looked at everyone without any emotions, yet tears were being shed. His static expression shamed Konako's blank expression. Issei, please, I... We beg you for forgiveness. I hurt you, so please let me make it up to you. Rias begged, but Issei looked without a soulless gaze with an empty voice. Rias, you didn't hurt me. You killed me. I'm so sorry. Rias says, Tell me something, you four. Was it all a lie? What do you mean, Konako says. All of it. Training, hanging out, sharing all personal secrets, all the battles in which we could have almost died in, living together. Issei then looked at Rias. Falling in love? Was that all just a plot to use me? To use Azia? If that's the case, then I don't want to be part of your parage anymore. Issei spread his wings and then just ripped them out without caring how much it hurt. He didn't even flinch from the pain. Iruna, Azia, and Akino covered their mouths and had a wide eyes. Rias, Kiba, Gasper, Ross, Vaisa, Irina, and Ravel looked on in horror at the sight. The sound leathery wings being ripped off their blood run cold. Issei held his wings and looked at them. I don't want to be a devil anymore. I'm leaving the ORC. I'm done. Azia immediately took his wings and used twilight healing. Issei was bleeding profusely after his little stunt. Azia healed both wings. Azia, I told you. I don't want to be a devil anymore. He tried to remove the wings again, but she and Irina stopped him. Issei, please, don't do that again, Zenovia said. She was trembling. Rias then completely broke down and so did the others. They just hugged him and found that he was shaking but still empty inside. Answer my question. Was it all a lie? No, Issei, it was all real. You're my brother. You saved me from being consumed by revenge, Kibe said. You helped me out of kindness, but we're never, we were never there for you. We're sorry, Konako said. All the time together wasn't a plot to control you. We really do love you, Akano said. Issei just breathes. Issei. 
I know what I did was wrong, but I promise you that every moment we spent together were the best of our lives. You gave your arm for me to beat Riser. You saved all of us to please let me make it right since I was the one who dragged you, the others, into my stupid plan, Rhea said. She buried her face into his chest while crying. We want our Issei back. That's right. We didn't think about what you went through, Zenobia said. And we blamed you for not confessing your feelings without considering yours, Irina replied. Ravel, just breathes. We missed the happy perv we used to know, Rosvices says. Rosvices said, trying to lighten the moon. That's just it. You won't get the old me ever again because it's like I said, you killed me. I'm gone. What? Azia said. It was my perversion that got me into this mess in the first place. If I wasn't so perverted that I wouldn't have questioned who Rainer really was. When she showed up out of nowhere wearing a uniform from another school that doesn't exist, I would have been more alert and not ended up getting a light spear go right through me. I'm sorry, but the old me is long gone. Rias whispered, no, no. Just then everyone got a magic circle up here next to their ears. It was an announcement of the rating games that was starting. The first matches. Guys, take a day off. As a teacher, I can get all of you off the hook. Issei, you are free to do as you wish. Take a leave of Aspen's absence. We can talk about it after we settle ourselves a bit. She gave Issei a genuine smile of sincerity and kindness. She did not want to help, and she's doing it the right way. I need to be alone for a while. Please, Issei says. They fulfill his request. Everyone follows Ross Visa. Irina and Azia stayed and refused to leave. You two can go if you want. I'll be fine, Issei says. We're not leaving. You might rip your wings out again and bleed to death. I failed you yesterday, and I won't put you through that again. Consider me your own guardian angel, Irina says. He let out a chuckle. A devil having a guardian angel. How interesting, Issei replied. Irina jumped on Issei and spread her wings that were now more black than white. She embraced Issei and Azia in her wings. Issei felt the sensation of soft feathers, but black color felt wrong, felt the unnatural. Issei looked at them, and now beginning to feel something, it was guilt. She nearly fell because of her guilt. She thinking that she hurt him. He won't let her put in all the effort. He will also try to make things better. Issei remembered something. He remembers Irina not blaming him for his inability to confess to Rias. Azia did, but did, but thinking back, Rias had her in the palm of her hand ever since she turned to a devil. He wasn't going to blame these two, or Gasper for that matter. He's going young. He is her bishop after all. He was just too loyal to her. Azia, Irina, thank you. I'll try to make things go back to normal, both for you and myself. Irina, don't blame yourself. I don't blame you at all. Don't fall for me because of this. I don't think I can actually live over the guilt if it were to happen. Stay as pure angel, Irina, we all know and love. Black wings won't suit you, I'm afraid. Only if it stays the same old Issei we know and love, Irina replies. Irina, we both know that's far too late. I won't go back to being a perv. I'm done with that since you were the one who defended me yesterday. I know for sure that you were truly an angel. Thank you and you as Ozzy as well. Both of you were at the cliff yesterday along with the others. I appreciate it. I'm sorry for attacking you. Irina's black feathers became white once more. She thought she was one who hurt him, but after hearing him say that she didn't do anything wrong, her guilt was gone. They stay in his embrace till the end of the school day. Issei was still shaking a little because he's afraid of women, but he didn't push them away because he didn't want to hurt them. They were hurting enough. It's the end of chapter two. Who are you? And that is where we will leave off for today. Thank you guys so much for all the support that's been going on to my channel. And we just ended off with part two. Who are you? So once again, thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it, like for real. 20,000 subscribers is such a crazy goal that I've had forever and I cannot believe it actually came true. But again, thank you. So, what if Naruto was betrayed? A lot of people have been asking me about that and they definitely want this series to come and it will, my friends. I just really wanted to read this story because it hyped me the up if you know what i mean so again bro i'm so glad if you guys like this story please hit that like button 500 likes that'd be amazing and if you guys again want to know when i directly upload or my upload schedule hit the little blue button right next to the subscribe button you don't have to if you don't want to but i prefer if you would because that'd be freaking awesome so again thank you for all the support i know i keep repeating myself on that but 20,000 subscribers has just been an insane goal that i've had in mind forever but once again the series that will coming to be in fruition are obviously this series what if 
Kagise finally lost it, and what if Naruto was betrayed? And thank you guys for all the support. Without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have what if Issei finally lost it part two. You guys know the like goal. Let's try to hit 500 likes again. Thank you for all the support on this series. A lot of people liked it. Thank you for the compliments on my voice. It's very nice. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Thank you so much for all the support. We are on the grind of 30,000 subscribers trying to hit 25k. Without further ado, wait, Merry Christmas to all of you. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 3, Unleash. A month has passed and Issei doesn't really interact much with Rias, Akino, Konako, and Kiba unless it was necessary. However, he was fine with everyone else and would smile around the other ORC members, that most including Irina. During school hours, his two friends may not completely remember what happened last month but had a vague glimpses of it but remember what they felt to the fullest. They wouldn't peep on the girls or tell Issei to join them, but instead stuck by his side, trying to make the best of their time with Issei. Issei was still depressed after everything. At night, Ozzy would cuddle with him to make sure he wasn't alone, but if he, she had a job, then Drake would pull him into the sacred gear and keep him company. Issei got a prescription from a doctor to help control his anxiety and depression. They helped a bit. He bought a small watch and a small alarm for each time he had to take his pills, but unfortunately, some of which went off during class, and he just didn't care if people saw him taking medication. Some of it was for his high blood pressure. Anytime his BP increased without a natural causes would make him tremble as it reminded him of that day. The teachers and the students all looked at him in worry. His hands would shake whenever any girl or female teacher would ever come near or talk to him. He couldn't make eye contact for more than a few seconds. He had all visible signs of depression, dark circles under his eyes, pale skin. He was skinnier than usual. He was silent and barely made a sound when the forced to interact. In those days, all of the kids in Co Academy noticed the three sitting together and completely ignoring the girls. Not one glance in the past month, they wanted to know what brought on the change. Akia, the lady perv, walks over. Sup, pervs, says Akia. Oh, hey, Akia, how's it going? replied Issei. Akia was surprised at Issei's response. Normally, he would straight up tell her to go away. Uh, I'm good? You okay? You seem a little down, said Akia. Matsuda, Akia, a moment, please. Akia and Matsuda go talk alone. Akia, we have a favor to ask, said Matsuda. Sure, but tell me what's up with you three, replied Akia. Fine. Issei doesn't talk about it much, but let's just say that his heart has been shattered and he's extremely depressed, replied Matsuda. That actually makes sense. He's usually with Rias and Akino, but most of us notice that he's been keeping the distance from them. That includes Konako and Kiba, replied Akia. That's about the gist of it. He talks about the other members, but not much, maybe except for Azia and Ilina. Zenobi and Gaspar, along with Ravel, join us, but Issei usually spaces out, replied Matsuda. Yeah, I noticed that when I looked it in the eyes. They seem empty. He's gotten skinnier and pale, said Akia. Yeah, we're pretty worried about him, replied Matsuda. You two really are friends, not just pervs, said Akia. No shit, Sherlock. Issei's our friend. We won't leave him in his time of need. I asked to come over, and my dog became his support animal. I even let him. I even let my doggo go with him some days, Matsuda said. Damn, there's more to you guys than what's less on a favor, huh? Akia replied. Keep it discreet and stop any rumors from spreading, please, Matsuda said. Sure, I can handle that, but tell me. Why did I start shaking when I came over? Why did he start shaking when I came over, replied Akia. He's basically afraid of any woman except for a certain few, which includes Zenovia, Irina, Ravel, Azia, and Ross Vice's sensei. He can hardly maintain eye contact with any other woman, said Matsuda. That's why we that's why he looks away. The instant we walked over to talk alone, Aki replied, Yeah, Matsuda said. Wow. All right. If he needs anything, let me know. We may not look like it, but we are friends. Should just tell me to do it, okay? Akia said. We really appreciate this, Akia, Matsuda replied. You know, you guys are pretty cool when you aren't peeping and looking after one another. We'll see ya, said Akia. Right. Take care, said Matsuda. Matsuda walks back to Motohama in Issei. Over time, Issei would turn, return to normal. He would walk more with the others and open up. He even began talking to Rias, Akino, Kiba, and Konoko more, but not too much. Iruno would, at times, stay with Issei, seeing his recover, recovery greatly reduced her guilt, which did nearly cause her to fall. Her wings were now mostly white again, and safe except for the few black feathers found here and there. Issei also felt happier, knowing that they did not truly care about him. 
Once even Rias and Ankano try to seduce him by offering themselves. Hey, Issei, care to join us? Rias said. Issei looked at them straight in the eyes and refused. He didn't once glance at their bodies. Rias and Akano asked him why. Issei responded with, Rias. Akano, I don't feel that way anymore, so just stop it. Their face is disbelief. Pure disbelief. Do you not love us anymore? Akano replied, I don't know, honestly, but I'm not driven by lust anymore. I need time to get over what happened, replied Issei. And with that, he leaves the ORC room. Both look at the new Issei walk away. He was no longer a perv and became a gentleman. He's become more of a man than we ever thought possible, Akano said. Yeah, I do miss his touch, though, Rias replied. We can only give him as much space as he needs, Rias. We put him through a lot. Akano said. I miss him. He's still there sometimes. I can't sense his presence even when he's right in front of us, Rias says. I notice too. He doesn't even know if he loves us anymore, Akano replied. I'm honestly starting to wish I could pray, Rias said. Both broke down once again. Now, back to the present. The rating game was about to start in one month time. Team Rias and Irina were training with Team Citri. Issei and Saji just started to train far off into the distance onto the mountain because... Wild dragon type sacred gears, both were duking it out, and were evenly matched at first, but Saji gained the upper hand. Give up, Issei, you can't win this match, I, I had trained a few upgrades. But can it compare to this, balance break, Drake. Welts dragon, balance breaker. Issei, now in his draconic armor, launched a strong punch towards Saji, who was still managing to dodge his attacks. Not bad, Issei said, yeah, Azazel gave me a great upgrade at the Gregor. I should have known. <laughs> well, try this. Promotion tonight. Issei's army became slimmer, and his speed is too much for Saji to dodge. Issei's tacked him into a tree, but Saji took this as a chance to attach his absorption line to his sacred gear. Uh-oh, Issei said. Fast physically, but not mentally, Saji said. Saji began to absorb his similar power simile to Volley. When he used Divine Dividing, Issei's power continues to drop to the point where his balance breaker falls apart, but something was wrong. Saji, cut the line now, said Drake. What? Suddenly, Issei got up and put Saji sever the line. Issei, what the hell, said Saji. Saji looked at him at some kind of white mist manifesting out of the air and solicitizing on his face. It turned to a mask, a white mask with red lines, just the cuts on his face. Issei, said Saji. Issei opened his eyes. His eyes were now yellow and red like fires of hell itself. Issei summons Ascalon and attacks Saji. He dodges and flared his aura in Morse code. S.O.S. Sona felt it. Why did you stop? Rias replied. Get to Saji now, said Sona. Everyone there stopped training immediately rushed to them and find Issei attacking Saji with full bloodlust. Issei, stop! Rises said. Issei then looked at her in spirits towards her already ready to cut down. Rias barely dodged. She had an opening to attack but couldn't. Issei recovered and was ready to try to slash her again and going straight for her throat. Rias was scared of hurting him again but luckily Saji sent another absorption line and used it to restrain him. It worked just long enough for Konako and Ross Vice to pin him on the ground. Sona used her magic to bind him. Irina, Zenovia, and Kiba brought out their swords just in case. They all looked at him and saw the mask covering it half of his face and his eyes. Saji, the mask, take it off of him. Zenovia touched it and tried to make it come off, but it wouldn't budge. Issei let out a screech that was a mix of his voice and ones that sent chills through everybody's spine. Rhea shot a small ball of destruction and it cracked the mask, which broke off and evaporated into nothing. Issei came to his senses and went back to normal. His skin color for was no longer pale, white he had earlier. Um, guys, why am I pinned on the ground and why are you three pointing your swords at me? You don't remember, said Ravel. I remember training with Saji, and then I blacked out after he absorbed my power. What happened, said Issei. They let him go. You really don't remember anything, replied Rias. No, said Issei. Not even trying to kill Lady Rias, Kiba said. I did what? Don't joke about that, Kiba, said Issei. I'm not. You're still holding Ascalon, replied Kiba. Issei looks at his hands and sees Ascalon in it. When did I... What is happening to me? We should contact Azazel before it's too late. That includes your brother, Sir Zex, said Sona. Yes, everyone cancel training for today. Issei, come on. Right, said Issei. And that's the end of Chapter 3, Unleash. Chapter 4, Azazel Knows. Issei was at the Gregor, and all his teammates were there. Azazel, sorry, I can't find anything wrong with you. I have no idea what happened to you, and there's no evidence that anything ever happened. 
He nearly cut me down, Azazel, replied Rias. She said in a sorrow-filled tone. I'm sorry, Rias, Issei replied. The way Issei apologized felt only half real. It was cold, almost as if, if he didn't regret it. What the hell happened between you and her, Azazel said. Can we please never talk about it, Issei said. Issei, if you won't tell him, then we will. We can trust him. <sighs> All right, I'll tell you, said Issei. Issei would then tell him everything that happened, from the drama in the club room, his reaction, depression, no desire, etc. Azazel was listening quietly, but his blood was boiling. That explains the shockwaves of coast of Japan and knew the craters on the moon, but the mask appearing makes no sense. Issei, think back, did something else happen? Azazel said. Issei goes into deep thought. He starts from the moment he heard to tell him that she let him die only to use him. Tears formed and he begins to shake. The girls quickly hold his hands and it calms him down, surprisingly. He manages to look through his memories and remember something. I remember being attacked after I woke up that day. I was near a bunch of trees and bushes and I heard some twigs snap. I thought it was like a small animal like a wildcat, dog or maybe a rabbit, or something so I paid no attention. Then my instincts kicked in, but not before the thing bit me. What thing, Irina said. It was similar to a skinwalker. I read about it, but it was weaker. Ash gray and had horns. It looked like its head was a skull, and there was a hole in its chest. It bit me and then turned to dust. Azazel seemed static, but he was panicking on the inside. Issei. Azazel's tone was fully serious. That thing that bit you was a Vastor Lordi. A what? It's a hollow and the strongest one of its kind. You're in a, a hollow? A hollow is a monstrous soul-eating spirit that results when a deceased soul is consumed by negative emotions or is forcibly converted by other hollows. <clears throat> All hollows have masks attached to their faces in a hollow hole somewhere on their bodies. They also have a tendency to attack those who are close to them in, in their human lives, which they are superficially have no recollection of. How they turn into them is their emotions consume them. A hole represent their how missing heart, and a mask shows their identity in a way. There are plain hollows that come in all shapes and sizes, with the most having unique abilities. Those are the low-class mementos. Gillens are the hundreds of menos, eating at each other and becoming one single hollow. They are called menos grande. Azazel pulls out some images from a file. That's a menos gran grande, and they travel in packs to increase chances of survival because they are surprisingly very weak. The next are called the Judas. They are stronger, faster, intelligent, and cunning. They can even speak, but the next one is the deadliest of all, the Vastor Lorde. Lucky, they are very, very, very rare. When a Judas become a Vastor Lorde, it becomes smaller, about the size of an average human. It can even have a human-like body, but their abilities are frightening, close to an ultimate class devil, easily. Those are a Judas, which one hollows with their mass removed. They get Soul Reaper powers. All hollows have one primary attack called Suro. It's a powerful beam of energy that can destroy continents, and even the lowest level hollows are that strong. Then how am I not dead? It could have killed me that day. I didn't even sense it at first, said Issei. That's just it. It is nothing but rage and fighting instincts. There is no presence to sense even when it stands in front of you. Most Hollands have one common attack, a Suro, said Azazel. A Suro, replied Iina. It's an energy-based attack like Issei's Dragon Shot, or Welsh or Welsh Bishop Blaster. One shot, if powerful enough, can do far too much damage, especially to a continuous beam being fired. Then why did it dis didn't it disintegrate me after a bit? Issei said. They need to follow on other hollows to maintain their power, but since there's not enough hollows in the human world, it grew too weak. Wait, if human souls turn into them, then how are there so few hollows? Irino says. The soul reapers handle them. It's their job to help them pass over the lost souls. How one Vastor Lordi ended up in the human world must be a fluke. They are usually in a different dimension once the Soul Reapers pass them on. Maybe this one went undetected this whole entire time. So why did that mask appear? Issei said. My guess is that when it bit you, it tried to consume you since you have drag in you. But being in such a state, you temporarily became a hollow. The three. What? That would explain why you couldn't find anything. There's no presence, thus no way to trace it, Azazel said. Now I'm really afraid, said Issei. Issei now slightly pale again. It got their attention. Irina, we're right here, Issei, don't worry. But what if it happens again, and I try to hurt you, Issei said. You won't. We know it, Azir replied. 
Not what happened to Rius, according to you guys, Issei said. About that, you skipped Saji and attacked her while ignoring the others. You still hate her? Isazel said. For what she put Azia through, yes, a part of me still does. Rius now had regret and anguish writ all over her. Irina. I'm glad you were stopped. That would have made you astray in public enemy number one. Everyone else's reaction was silent. Is there a way to control it? Issei replied. I don't know, but here. Take this armband, it'll alert me if it happens again. Maybe try going to Kyoto. Maybe the sage users can help to balance out your emotions, but before that you need to talk to them and accept the changes that of in the sudden revelation. You won't be able to control it if you can't control yourself. It might just consume you entirely. Azazel attached an armband right away where he was bitten. Thanks, we can always count on you, Azazel, said Issei. Happy to help. Now don't you all have a raiding game to prepare for? You don't have long, you know, Issei said. Or as Azazel said. Right, thanks again, said Issei. They all leave. Be safe, Issei. This will be hard for not just you, but those around you, Azazel said before Issei walked out. And that is the end of chapter 4, Azazel Knows. Chapter 5, Change. They all went to Issei's home. He started walking straight to his room, but then was stopped by Akano. Hey, Issei, are you okay? Akano says. Yeah, why do you ask? What do you mean, why? Because we are worried about you, Akano said. Oh, Issei replied. Issei continues to walk to his room, and everyone just stared on in silence. Too much has happened to him. I'll go talk to him, Ross Weiss said. I think I should, Rias replied. Let Ross Weiss try. None of us managed to do much, so maybe she can't. She, Irina, and Ravel are the only ones who didn't blame him that day, and it's not fair to make Ravel fix our problems, Zenobia replied. Okay, fine, Rhea said. Ross Vaisa goes up to Issei's room and knocks. Come in, he says in a low, empty voice. Ross Vaisa opens the door and sees him sitting in the dark. What little light going through the curtains was all that illuminated in the room. Something you need, Issei said. We need the old you, Ross Vaisa replies. Not possible, I'm afraid, Issei said. Look, I'm sure that- Oh, for the love of God, can I just turn on the lights, Ross Vaisa said. Sure, Issei replied. She turns on the light and sees Issei sitting hugging his knees and is as depressed as ever. You're still depressed about what happened, aren't you? Ross Vaisa said. Chuckled. <laughs> what gave it away? Issei said. Ross Vaisa knew normal methods won't work on him. Issei, think about the others. Don't you want to be a harem king? Fuck being a harem king, Issei said. They all, they all burst through the door and said in unison, What? You don't want a harem? Irina says, that's your dream, Issei, Rias said. Not anymore. I came to the realization, Rias, I was too naive. A fool. I let lust consume me ever since I can remember, Issei said. But Issei, we all want to be a part of your harem, Azia replied. Issei looks to her. I'm sorry, Azia, but I won't do that to you. To any of you, Issei said. What do you mean, Akino says. <laughs> Think about it. I wanted a harem to fulfill my sexual desires, and that means I would only end up uprising all of the women in the room, and that would make me a piece of shit. No different from Diodora or Riser a while back, Issei says. You're nothing like them, Konoko replied. Thanks, Konoko. And now that I have no sexual desires at all, I won't be, Issei said. Issei, please. This isn't you. What about the kids who love the grabbing dragon? Yuna replied. Issei's eyes went dark. He punched a hole in the wall. Those kids? What have I done? Issei replied. Issei, please calm down. How can I? I exposed them to my perverted nature and probably turned them into the perv I used to be. Fuck, Issei said. Issei punched more holes in the wall repeatedly. They all group, all of the group hugs him when he sobs. What have I done? What have I done? Issei says. Issei, it's okay, man. It's okay. No, it's not. I've turned them into someone like me. Issei is now even more broken when he sees the extent of his desires affecting those around him. Should we go to Kyoto and look for help, Ravel said? Not yet. Please, just stay like this. For a little while. I'm not ready. I'm just... not. Rias was slightly happy that Issei wanted everyone to be with him, but confused about how to help him. Guys, don't tell anyone about what Azazel told us, okay? Azazel said. We promise, said Gasper. A week had passed and the whole time Issei was quiet. He would space out, but he would still find the will to sit with the others, do his job as a devil, and would train, but not to the level it was before. One day, two his two guy friends showed up and Issei hung out with them in their room. 
He gave them all magazines and DVDs that he had been relating to porn. The two refused at first, but eventually accepted after Issei begged them to take it. They kept it safe and hidden, should he ever want them back. Issei and the guys no longer viewed as the perverted trio were more accepted in their school. Their grades had improved and enjoyed themselves more. Whenever any of the girls showed up, Issei would look at them right in the eye but never their bodies. That was one of the signs that Issei and his friends had changed. Even Akia stopped teasing, but would see the ORC members looking at Issei from behind, the bushes, or out the window. Oh, how the tables have turned, Akia said. Three weeks to the left of the rating, three weeks left to the rating game. Issei remembers his promise to Sauerorg. He will give him the fight for his life and change the perception on how people see him. He's not the Grappin Dragon anymore. Drake, Issei said. Yes, Issei? I'm sorry for what you went through because of me. It's okay, partner. It's nothing compared to what you have experienced. You'll be okay, Drake said. Thanks. By the way, I've been thinking that stupid dress break. What if instead of clothes, I rip out the opponent's magic or energy? Interesting. Perhaps you can undo certain spells after they've been cast, Drake said. I better start practicing, Issa replied. Issa, we both know that you're in your current state, there's no point. You need to be the determined Issa we all know and love. If you're worried about becoming a hollow, then go to Kyoto but clear your mind and heart. You need to talk to all four of them, Jake replied. I suppose it was inevitable, but how do I tell her that I'm not in love with her anymore, Issei says. Issei, I hate people who lie to themselves, so just stop it, Drake said. Huh? She's in love with you, and you are in love with her. We both know that, Jake replied. Drake, it's the truth. I'm not in love with her anymore. Wait, you're serious? Yes. So the reason you are still somewhat ignoring her is because of this? Drake said. Issei nods in agreement. Damn. Then it's best to let her down gently and tell her in private, Jake replied. Issei sends a message to the four and asks them to meet him somewhere private. They responded immediately and chose the park at midnight. Midnight arrives. Thanks for coming, guys. We're happy to, you want to talk to us like this again, Kiba said. You've only talked to us when you had to, Akuna replied. It worried us all, Konako said. Then you guys do care, Issei, Issei smiled, a real smile after all this time. It's good to see your smile again, Rhea said. Thanks. Listen guys, I want things to go back to normal, Issei replied. That's what we want too, Kiba said. But there will be some changes. I think we are better off as friends and teammates, but nothing more. They are surprised. Issei, what are you saying, said Rhea. You know exactly what I mean, Rhea. No more physically intimate relationship. No falling in love. None of that shit, Issei said. Issei, are you breaking up with us? Akano replied. Yes, Akano. I am. But why? Konako said. All of you already know why. I won't show any favoritism in making the others feel less about themselves. How many times have fights broken out and led to wanton destruction? And Kiba, I'll continue to train with you. Kiba just sits there in silence. I'll continue being your pawn and help you with the raiding game, continue being a figure in the underworld, but the grab and dragon is no more, Issei says. There's no way to persuade you, is there? Akino says. She said with tears forming. No. I'm sorry, my antics have gone too far, for too long. Even Drake, a heavenly dragon, was affected by my shit. To do such a messed up thing is something I need to rectify, Issei replies. None said a word for a minute. Guys... I need to talk to Issei alone. Please give us a minute, Rhea said. Sure, Konaka replied. She answered for the three of them and went home. Issei and Rhea were now alone. Issei sits there in silence. Issei, you know that I'm in love with you, and so are the other girls, and I know that. And so do you. So why? Rhea said. The reasons I told you earlier. Those? How one tiny mistake led to everything being unraveled. You let Azia and I die, and painfully I might add. How can I be in love with someone like that? And those who knew about it. You were the love of my life. Just because I didn't say your name, you let it slip? That you let me die? I know that you hate me for that, and I hate myself for that too. But what did you mean by I was the love of your life? Rias replied. Rias, I'm not in love with you anymore. Rise replied. Rias' heart broke and pieces shattered. What? No, no. Issei. Don't say that, please. She embraced him tightly. I'm not lying, Rius. I can't love ever again. Rius replies, 
Why not? Rainer manipulated and toured with my emotions. She used me and killed me. Then you showed up right after and turned me into a pawn only to be used again. And again. You also toyed with my emotions. I didn't have time to support to fix the damage Rainer did and just when I fell for you and then... All this shit happened. But... But I, tell me, Rius, if you were in my place, would you have loved me if I did the same to you? Would you have fallen for me if I couldn't save you from Riser? Uh, no, Rius said. Yeah, I figured. I'm sorry, Rius, but our relationship is strictly platonic and professional from this point on. Rius is now crying, holding nothing back. But, but I'm sorry, my selfishness pushed you over the edge. I didn't even know you, what you were happening. Please, just... Forgive me, forgive us. Isi's eyes now red from trying to hold back the tears. He embraced her too and they both cried to their absolute limit. They cried and stayed in each other's embrace till the sun came up. None of them slept or even moved. Once the sun hit their red puffy eyes, they were both quiet and saw the sun rise. We stayed here all night. Yeah, Isi said. I've thought about what you said. I can't blame you for not wanting to be with the others or me. Ozzy is like a little sister to me. Irina is my childhood friend. Ravel is a good friend and ally. Zenovia just wants some kids and strong ones. It's not love between us. She'll find someone to love and a happy family with. Akino too. And you. Konako and Ross Vice don't see me that way. And I'm okay with that, Issei said. So many lovers, but you want none of them. Why? Rius replies. I don't want to be selfish, Rius. How could I deprive them of their right partners who are out there somewhere when I hardly think I'm worthy of being with any of you? Issei replied. Issei may not be love. Issei maybe not love the girls like he used to, but he still cares enough to tell them a little bit lie to spare their feelings. You're more than worthy for me, Rius replies. Too damaged for that, Rius. I'm not that guy anymore. I'm a hollow shell of once I was, and I'm afraid that'll hurt you. I remember when I used Juggernaut Drive. You tried to help, and I swatted you away, though I hurt you. Rius looked him in the eyes and let a fresh tear fall down. Rius wiped it away. But I wasn't hurt, Rius replied. But I won't risk it. If my inner hollow takes over, then... It's okay. We'll be there just like you've been there for us, Rius says. Thanks, Rius. Issei, I have two final part requests. Sure, anything, Issei says. One, please call me by my name regardless of the circumstances, okay? Done. And the second, one final kiss, Rhea says. Issei is a bit taken back by her request. Even after what I said? Yes, we both kiss one last time, pour our heart into it until there's nothing left. Issei looked at her eyes and then her lips. Okay, Rhea, fine. Thank you. They locked eyes and they held each other. They inched closer in the second they kissed their eyes, closed their eyes. The final kiss was full, the full extent of their love for one another. And once that kiss breaks, their love will forever end. They held nothing back. This was the final goodbye to their feelings for one each other. After what seemed like eternity, they broke the kiss and it's done. Riestin looked at the reflection of the sun in his eyes. So see you after school this weekend, huh? Ria said, yeah, I'll see you guys there. Riestin walks away. Are you okay, partner? Drake said, yeah. If I may ask, why not stay with at least one of them? Drake said, no favoritism. It'll just cause more trouble, Issei replied. But you found love, Issei. You sure it was wise to let it go? Drake replied, finding love where it shouldn't be is love that is not meant to last. I don't care if I'm the villain. At least they won't hate each other, Issei replied. Damn, never thought you would be willing to go so far, Drake said. I feel more clear in mind and heart now. Go rest, Issei. You earned it, Jake replied. That's the end of chapter 5, Change. That is where we're going to stop for today. We ended off with chapter 5. So thank you guys for all the support once again that's been happening with this series. I really do appreciate it. We officially hit 21,000 subscribers. Like seriously, I cannot thank you enough. Okay, but going to the next one, let me hear your thoughts. Please let me know. Do you guys want like a what if Naruto was betrayed? Because I really want to look for it. My bad. I'm not even going to ask you guys if I want it because I'm going to do it regardless just because I do it. I already said I was going to do it, so I'm going to do it. When I say something, I'm going to do it. So, I just it's just because I enjoy it so much. So, again, thank you for all the support. Once again, if you did reach the end of the video, please 
hit the like and subscribe button. If you guys want to know exactly when I upload, just click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. They always know a day or two beforehand when I upload a video. So I'll just let everyone know when that happens. So once again, thank you for all the support. We are, I can't believe we hit 21,000 subscribers. It truly is amazing. Okay. I would say it's lucky, but it's all that hard work. So again, shout out to the author for writing the story. Okay. I didn't write it. I just narrate it. And sometimes I fix some dialogues from here and there because sometimes it gets kind of wonky and I just put, you know, a bunch of emotion into it and things like that. And thanks for the compliments on like wanting to hear my voice and things like that. But once again, I'm going to final off with thank you for all the support. If you guys want to hear what if Naruto was betrayed, I'm currently making the thumbnail as we speak, you know, and I got the story. So we're good on that. And thank you guys for all the support. Without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have what if Issei finally lost it part three. Now you guys know the like goal, the like goal is... 500 likes so if you guys want to hit that like button please hit that like button it would be really appreciated also hit the subscribe button and if you guys want to know exactly when i upload press the little blue button right next to the subscribe button thank you guys for all your support we hit 22,000 subscribers it's absolutely amazing without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it chapter six kyoto plan Rias went home to the others who stayed up all night waiting for her after akino kibo and konoko came back so soon they all looked with one question in their minds what happened? Kiba started off with an explanation and then Rhea slowly continues from where he left off, after she told them everything. He really has changed, huh? Rossweiss has said. At least he's still with us as our comrade and friend, Ravel replied. So he's no longer in love with any of us, Azia said. I miss the old him, Gasper replied. As do we. But it's because of some of us that he's changed so much so soon, Akino said. The one man who loved us unconditionally. It didn't care if we were a fallen, a devil, a phoenix, angel, or anything. He used to love us for us. He still does, but no longer the way he used to, Rias replied. Can you blame him? We weren't exactly the most supportive when he was afraid to confess, Irina replied. Now that Issei mentioned it, he's right. I wasn't in love with him. After the whole Cocoville incident, I tried to have my way with him only to have strong kids. I didn't love him like the rest of you did. Fuck, I'm a horrible friend. So where is he now? Gasper replied. No idea, honestly. He sat on the bench even after I left, Rhea said. Shouldn't we look for him? Konoko replied. No need. He needs his space. Let's respect that, Kiba replied. Yeah, let's just rest for the day and start training tomorrow. The rating game is coming up, Rhea replied. Yes, everyone said in sync. Yes, Issei decided to go for a walk after sitting on the bench all night. As he walked, he felt better about how it all went down. He was more at peace now than before. After a while of walking aimlessly, he ended up right where it all began. The park where Rainer murdered him and where Rias brought him back. What are you thinking, Issei? Dreg replied. Everything, Issei said. Do you feel sorry for them or yourself? Drake said. No, I'm not sorry for what I did. Just sorry that I had to do it, Issei said. Issei, you've been up all night. Go to sleep, man. You need to train soon, Drake replied. I'll go to a hotel for a day. Leave the others alone for a while, Issei replied. Wise choice. Honestly, I think you've grown a lot in the past two months and handled everything as well as one considering everything, Drake said. Yeah, me too. No more pervert stuff. People like me more because of it. I have good friends who were by my side the whole time. I was down in the dumps. That includes you, Drake. Thanks. What are partners for? Issei smiles and books a hotel room for the day and resets, and finally without any nightmares. By the end of the day, Issei woke up, paid, and left for home. As soon as he walked in, his parents greeted him. Welcome home, Miki said. Glad to be home, Issei replied. Goro, where have you been? The girls are all upset. I decided that my relationship with them should be platonic, Issei replied. Wait, what? I thought you loved them, Miki said. I do love them, but not the way you think, Issei said. What about Rias? Goro replied. I'm not in love with her anymore, Issei replied. W what? Both parents said in surprise. Yeah, I'm done with love. Sex, porn, everything. I got rid of all that crap in my room, too, Issei said. I don't know if I should be worried or proud, Issei. What will happen to the girls living here, Miki replied. No need to worry. We are all still family in a way. Just don't expect any grandkids from me. Sorry, Issei replied. Issei, 
we love those girls as our own, but you're our son. Tell us what happened. Long story short, I'm not compatible with any of them as a lover. Obvious, Ozzy is like a little sister. Irina is my childhood friend. The others, well, it just didn't work out. And my love life with them reached their end. I don't want to hurt them, Issei says. Miki hugs Issei. Issei, I know that there's a lot more to it. But do tell us when you want to talk, okay? Issei hugs his mother back. I promise when the time is right, I'll tell you both everything. They break their hug. There's something you should know. I have to go to Kyoto again. Sensei says he needs help. How long will you be gone? Goro repeats. Three weeks at most. That long? Relax, mom. It's just work. Kind of an internship. I hope you don't get involved with anything bad, Goro replies. I'll be fine. There are a lot of kind people there, and it's beautiful, Issei replies. Who's going with you? Besides Sensei? Not sure yet. Well, call us and let us know if you want to talk or anything like that. Okay? Sure, Mom. Dinner will be ready soon, Goro replies. Issei nods and goes to his room. He takes a shower, changes his clothes, and then starts packing. After doing so, he calls a Seizel. I assume you're ready to train in Kyoto, Issei replies. Yeah. When do we leave? Tomorrow, if possible. I already packed. They end the call and Issei exits his room and bumps into Ross Visa. Issei, you're back? Ross Visa replies, yeah, but I'm leaving for Kyoto tomorrow with Azazel. I'm going with you. Suit yourself, Issei replies. We should tell the others. I'll tell them. Come on, they are waiting, Issei replies. They both have dinner with everyone and there's silence. That was tense as it can be. Guys, I'm going to Kyoto tomorrow with Azazel. And Ross Visa tagged along, Issei says. Akino, I can come if you want. Rias replies, Thanks, but you two need to prepare for graduation. It's a big day for you two, Issei replies. Oh, right, I almost forgot, Rias says. Issei helped with the dishes and then went to bed, but still sleepy even after sleeping almost most of the day. They did notice the dark circles under his eyes, but already knew the cause. The next day, Issei said farewell to everyone and secretly teleported Kyoto with Ross Visa. Azazel was already there waiting for them. I'm glad Rias came along. It's good to have someone we can trust. You ready, Issei? Issei uh, Azazel replied. As our elder B, let's do this, Issei says. They walk to the shrine and are greeted by Yakuza. Yeah, welcome, Red Dragon Emperor, Governor General, and Lady Valkyrie, Yakuza says. Thank you for having us, Lady Yakuza. Issei and the others bow in respect. Yakuza being the one with the natural flow of energy of the earth and those who inhabit and sense something different about Issei. He was much too different in such a short amount of time. Azazel told me something... About a hollow bidding you? You wish to control it, don't you? Yakuza replies. I do. I won't turn into I won't turn into one that can hurt my loved ones, Issei says. Well, you came to the perfect place. One of our own was born with hollow powers and mastered it, Yakuza said. Born with hollow powers? That's a first. Come. It's best to meet her yourself. Issei says to himself, Her? His fear kicked in, but he didn't want to take control, like before. He powered through it, even though when his heart was beating fast. They follow her deep into the territory and come to a stop in front of a small house. We are here, Yakuza says. She knocks on the door and opens mere seconds later. A beautiful woman was once opened the door and her beauty was above even Rias and Akino's combined. Oh my, Azazel said. Azazel had a little blush, but surprisingly, Issei didn't. Well, not that surprising when you think about it. Everyone meet Ari. She's the one who mastered her hollow powers all on her own. You really are too kind, Lady Yakuza, Ari replies. Ari, this is Issei Hyoto, the Red Dragon Emperor, accompanied by the Governor General of the Fallen Angels and Ross Vice of the Valkyrie. It's an honor to meet you all. Ari, the three bow. The honor is ours, reply the three. So how may I help you, Ari says. Isi was bitten by a hollow, and his mask already appeared once. We need to learn how to control it to avoid letting the inner hollow control him. I can help, but I need to know a few things. Where was he bitten, Ari replies. Little over a month ago. And what type of hollow? Vastrolordi. Ari's eyes widen and her ears pointed backwards. Her nine snow white tails stiffen. How are you still alive after encountering one of those? That's just it. It turned into dust after it bit me, Issei replied. Good, that's good, Ari says. Please explain, Ross Vaisu says. That means that the Vastrolili barely had enough energy left and transferred whatever it had to Issei, but it grows over time until it reaches its prime and it can be controlled little by little, Ari says. But, Yakuza says. 
you possess that particular sacred gear. If you lose control, then you would turn into a Vasher Lordy that commands the boosted gear. And I don't have to tell you what would happen after that. Issei's power would be limitless and unstoppable, Azazel says. In other words, we're all done for, Rosweiser replies. When do we start training, Issei says. Right away. It's important that it'll be far from easy, Eri says. I expect nothing less. Is it possible to control it within three weeks, Issei replies. I hope so. I hope you have a rating game to attend. I know you have a rating game to attend, Eri replies. If you don't mind... Would you show us that controlled hollow powers look like? Uh, sure, Aerie says. Ta-da, Aerie replies. I can't sense your power, even though I know you're stronger in that form. Just one of the tricks you learn in time, Issei reply, er, Aerie replies. Aerie, Aerie, I'll leave the Red Dragon Emperor in your care. One of his companions will be by his side, just in case. Better safe than sorry. Ari replies, Thank you for helping me, Lady Ari. Oh, please, just Ari is fine. Come inside, there's an underground training space, Ari says. Issei bows to Yakuza and enters. Once the door closes, her smile disappeared and a serious look appears. A Vastra Lordy? Please tell me I don't need to worry, Yakuza says. That's why we are here, as Hazel replies. Well, how did one appear in the human world, Yakuza says. Telling you that would raise more questions as to how Issei encountered one. Let's talk over tea, Issei uh, as Hazel says. I'll stay here, Rossweiser replies. We won't be far. Call us in case you need our help, as Hazel says. Right, Rossweiser replies. And that is the end of Part 6, The Kyoto Plan. Part 7 slash Chapter 7, Self-Control. Okay, so Red Dragon Emperor, let's start, Ari says. What's the first step, Issei says. Alright, I'll make it brief. There are a few things you must know. One, you can only master the power to its current level. Once the Hollow Within gets to its prime, you have to find a way to master, but there's where you'll be on your own, Issei, uh, a year says. What? Issei replies, I was born with hollow powers equal to an Anaxar Max, but you were bitten by the strongest there is, a Vestor Lorde. And it replies, So what do you think my current level is? Issei says, According to Azazel, the mask appeared, which means that you're at a lower class Menos, but you still need to control it, Eri replies. And how do I control a creature that is nothing but hate and bloodlust? Issei replies, That is where it gets interesting. Not all hollows are like that. Most contain some aspects of their memories or personality. Also, it's not just some creature, it's you. What? Isera says, The hollow powers are a part of me, and now a part of you. You and the hollow are two sides of the same coin, Ari replies. Interesting. This does simplify things, Drake says. To an extent. So do I look inside myself or meditate, Isera replies. Yep, the hollow within you is a manifestation of your hate and anger. How will you control it will be up to you. Ari replies, should I put up a barrier? Rossweiser replies, yes, the process can be a bit dangerous for everyone to be honest. Issei will have his internal struggle, will try to avoid an external one. Ari replies, then I better get started, Issei says. Issei sits on the ground and begins to meditate. Rossweiser creates a barrier and a very strong one. Can he hear us from inside the dome? Ari replies, no, Rossweiser replies. Good net. Good now, if it's not much to ask, how did he get bitten by a Vastralori of all hollows, especially in the human world, Ross Vice, uh, Ari says. I may be at a place for doing this, but I think you should know. Here's what happened, Ross Vice starts saying. With Azazel and Yakuza, scene break. I'm sure you noticed a lot of change in him, Azazel says. Yakuza's still serious. How could I not? Just a little over a month ago, he was... This strong, optimistic Red Dragon Emperor that saved me from the Chaos Brigade with the help of his friends and now there's barely a shred of that left in him. What happened to him? Yakuza says. A misunderstanding that led to a deep, dark truth behind being revealed, which led him to being heartbroken yet again before the old wound eventually fully healed, Azazel says. As Yaka, Yakuza just sits there in silence. I'll tell you everything over tea. You have the right to know since you agreed to help us, Azazel says. I couldn't really refuse since all of you helped save me in Kyoto, Yakuza says. Which reminds me, where is Kuno? Azazel says. I sent her somewhere safe. She really looks up to Issei and his current state would scare her, I fear, Yakuza says. 
It scared us too, Azazel replied. The two had tea and Azazel told her everything, from Issei being hunted down by Fallen to his current state. Azazel knew about how Issei broke off his intimate relationship with the girls, but didn't feel like it was his place to say it. But Yakuza figured it out on her own. I assume he is no longer he no longer loves the girls like before, Yakuza replies. That is correct, Azazel says. And what about the girls who didn't turn to hurt him like they like they did? Yakuza says. It's strictly platonic relationship at this point. He's too afraid now. He discarded his dream of having a harem completely and no longer has any interest in even looking at girls the way teenage boys should. Just before the incident, that's all thou about but now. That's all though about now. What about the scars on his face? Did the hollow cause that? Yakuza right? No. It was Rhea. She hit him when she got emotional after Es was scared of confessing, as Azazel says. I'm surprised he hasn't killed Rhea's grimmery at this point, Yakuza says. He almost did, as Azazel replied. Yakuza nearly spit out her tea. When his hollow powers manifested, everyone came to stop him, including Rhea's. He straight up attacked her, and if it weren't for the others, then she would be dead. And so he would have since a devil killing or abandoning of their master marks them as a stray, as Azazel says. So not to avoid causing more pain to us, he came to us. I can't imagine the pain he's in, Yakuza replied. Far too much. But he has friends and family helping it out now. Just one of the few reasons he hasn't gone full hollow yet. I'm glad he's not alone. His anger and lowliness would have been the death of him and us, Yakuza replied. Indeed, a vast reality combined with the boosted gear, his power would have reached Devil King or, great, or Greater easily. A terrifying thought indeed, Yakuza said. Back with Issei in his training, Issei sat in silence and looked deep inside of his subconscious. He looked around and saw all of his memories, everything he experienced, everything he left. He lost in his memories of his old life until he saw the ones he dreaded. Rainer killing him, Rias reviving him, using him, loving him. All the others who were there but hid the truth and some of them completely turned him into a villain. Made him feel all like shit. All those negative emotions came rushing back. Then he saw the darkness. What emerged from the darkness was a figure. The very same one that bit him. It charged at Issei with great speed. He dodged it but barely. Issei summoned his boosting gear, but it didn't appear. What the? Drag? I need your help. Drag? Issei said. No response. Only the blood-curling screech from Hollow echoed through his subconscious. Look. Looks like I'm on my own. Come on, you bastard, Issei says. Issei engaged into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Outside, Issei's mind skip, we're back with Ross Vaisa and Eri. So what's happened, Ross Vaisa says. Eri looks down in sadness. Damn, it's a miracle that he hasn't gone full hollow after all that. Since he's afraid of women, then how is he here asking for my help, Eri replied. He was shaking bit even when Lady Yakuza or you and I were close by. You may not have noticed, but I did. Thankfully, he knows that he has a problem and is trying to overcome it, Rasvisa says. How is he recovering? On his own? Eri replies. He isn't alone, Rasvisa says. I'm glad that he has good friends. If they really were good friends, then he wouldn't have been in this situation, Rasvisa says. Rasvisa was now sad and that she was to a comrade and his friend but didn't help him when he needed. None of them paying, are paying attention until they hear a growl. They both look at Issei as the growl came from him. They saw it, the same mask appearing again, but there's more. It's beginning to cover parts of his torso, slowly spreading to his neck and all the way to his back. Oh shit, Ari says. What do we do, Ross Beiser replies. Reinforce the barrier. If that fails, you'll need to call Lady Yakuza and Azazel, Eri replies. Ross Beiser creates more barriers just in case, then calls for them to rush over. They arrive in under a minute since they couldn't teleport due to the anti-teleportation ruins all over the room. What is ha- Oh shit, Azazel says. We should stop him, as Yakuza, Yakuza says. Not yet. Issei is still in control to an extent, Eri replies. How can you tell, Ross Beiser says. With his current level, he would have- busted the barriers by now and used it the boosted gear so what's happening to Issei is this part of the process as Azazel said yes he's fighting the hollow within him now back into Issei's subconscious Issei was actually holding his own but not enough to overpower him the hollow wasn't slowing down it may be the same one that bit him but it was strong enough to push him into a corner slowly Issei eventually saw an opening and elbowed it right in the face which began to crack the hollow stopped in half of what we know was a mask, but was behind the mask was a real shocker. Issei himself, his hollow self. His hollow self looked at him and smiled. Who, who are you? Issei says. Ha 
Isn't it obvious? I'm you, Hollow Issei says. Like hell you are, Issei said. Issei started fighting his hollow self with even more rage, more power. That's right, keep fighting. I love it. <laughs> hollow Issei says. Shut up, Issei says. Outside, Issei was looking more and more like a hollow with each moment. Issei let it out. Issei let out a sound that was a mix of his voice in the hollow. His gauntlet appeared. Drag? Azazel said, I'm trying Azazel, I can't reach Issei, but I can't stop him from using my power as much as I can. But it's becoming too much, Drake says. We have to stop him, Yakuza replied. We have no choice. Better safe than sorry, Ari says. Ari hollified. Entering through a hole, Ross Faisa made in the barrier, followed by Azazel and Yakuza. Once they entered, Issei was even more terrifying. Up close, he looked at them. They began to try to restrain him without injury, but he was growing stronger. Boost! Everyone's... Everyone stop holding back because he's not, Drake replied. Damn it. Balance break, Azazel says. Azazel, now an artificial balance breaker, tackled Issei and then slashed him with his golden spear. It wounded Issei, but it healed instantly like a phoenix heals. High speed regeneration? He's full of surprises, Azazel said. Uh, Azazel let him try, Air replied. Aerie in her hollow forms used her serum merged with sage magic. Flame Sidil. Aerie launched an attack. She launched an attack while Yakuza bound Issei using magic seals. Azazel used gravity magic to keep him from moving. Ross Vice is still trying to maintain the barriers from collapsing due to everything happening. In inside Issei's subconscious, Just go away, Issei says. No can do, I'm a part of you now, Hollow Issei replies. I hate you. You Do you hate me or yourself since we're both the same person, Hollow Issei says. Issei froze. Issei just sat there in silence. Hello, Issei also stopped fighting. Figure it out yet? No. Well, we can fight again next time. Toodles, Hello, Issei said. Wait, get back here. I want answers. I'm you. Whatever you know, I know. So ask yourself. Our time for today is up, Hello, Issei replies. Issei is then forced out of his subconscious before he can register what happened. He wakes up and sees the four around him as he found himself laying on the ground. Welcome back. How do you feel? Ira replies. I'm somewhat okay. He, st he gets up and looks around. What the hell happened here? Issei said. You nearly turned into a hollow and almost took us down, Yakuza says. Wait, all four of you? Issei replied. You grew more powerful every minute, Ross Vices said. And did so by using Drake's power, who also trying to stop you from using him, Ari says. I'm so sorry. It's okay. We knew the risks. Take a break from now and tell me what you experienced. Why wait? I fought my doppelganger. Well, the hollow inside of me. It looked like me, but it was more ruthless and bloodthirsty and downright cryptic. Or should I say I... It, or should I say I attacked myself? It was all very confusing. Yakuza and his sales just sat there in silence. Rest for now. We can talk about it after you ate something. You have been in your hollow state for a few hours now, I replies. Hours? It felt like a few moments in my subconscious, Issei replied. Which is another plane if you existence if you ask me. <laughs> I replies. Issei returns a smile. With so many supernatural beings in multiple dimensions. Makes sense, <laughs> Issei replies. I Azazel saw Issei smile again. Just a few hours ago, he was shaking. He was proud that Issei was already making progress in more ways than one. Glad you're okay, kiddo, Azazel replied. And that is the end of Chapter 7, Self-Control. Chapter 8, Acceptance. For the whole week, Issei trained, but it was the same result each time. Eri, Ross Faisa, Azazel, and Yakuza all had to restrain Issei and break his mask every time he lost control. Issei lay in deep enough. Every time he fought his hollow self, he would get the same response from it. All that you know is all that I know, but the difference is... I'm what you're afraid of the most. What did that mean? Issei thought to himself. Still confused, huh? Ari replied. Oh, hey, Ari. What's going through the mind of the Grab and Dragon this time? Ari said. Please don't call me that. I hate it, Issei replied. Oh, that's right. You hate what you used to be, Ari said. Who told you? Azazel or Ross Visa? The latter. Oh, right, Issei said. You were overthinking it, Ari replied. How so? I can't tell you. If I did, then you'll never master the power within you, Ari replies. Yeah, that's fine, Issei says. Ari looks at Issei as he stares off into the distance. She noticed the three scars on his cheek and she whispers to herself, How did I not notice that he has the same marks as I do? Hey, Issei, funny thing, Ari says. This ought to be good. 
We have the same marks on our cheeks, and you also have similar marks when your mask appears, Ari says. Issei touches the three scars that give that Rias gave him, and it just reminded him of everything. Ari saw the look of despair in his eyes, and her ears dropped and failed to attempt to lighten the mood. Looks like I brought up some bad memories. I apologize, Ari says. Don't be. No one lives a perfect life. This is just part of mine, Issei replies. Issei... Uh, I know you're still hurting inside, Ari replies, but I forgave them. I still care for them and want us all to be together. But did you forgive yourself? Ari replied, forgive m myself, Issei said? Yes. You made some mistakes in your past. You were extremely perverted, but you're miserable now. You're angry about everything and you hate yourself now, don't you? Issei just sits there in silence. Forgive yourself and accept it, Ari replies. How can I? My perverted nature affected the entire underworld. Those poor kids. Almost all the women in my team and many others I mostly thought about adding to my harem. I thought about them as objects to fulfill my own desires. Damn it, Issei says. But you still love them. You saw them as people. As they were. Not titles they carry. You were kind to them. And from what I hear, you refused to make a move because you knew it wasn't the right time or place, Ari replied. You're a good man, Issei. Don't let the dark consume the light. You deserve to love too. Ari gives Issei a quick kiss on the cheek, then walks away. Issei placed his hand on his cheek and thinks, her kiss was softer than any of the girls. Forgive myself, huh? Issei replied. What are you thinking, Issei? Drake said. Nothing really. It's a whim, but it's something worth trying. Shouldn't we call the others first? Drake replied. No need. I think this might work. Ch charging in without a plan or backup. There's the partner I know. Ha! <laughs> Alright. Issei begins to meditate and enters his subconscious. Hollow Issei. Back so soon? I want to talk. Oh, that's a first, Hollow Issei replied. I know what you are now. Most importantly, I know who you are. Do tell. You're me. I've been telling you that all week, dumbass, Hollow Issei replied. You're also the part of me that I'm scared of. The anger, the sorrow, the bloodlust, all of it, Easy replied. Now we're getting somewhere. It took quite a while for the obvious to sink in, Haloisa replied. Easy walks closer to him. I want to thank you. Wait, what? If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have gotten stronger. I wouldn't have been alive. Hollow Issei was now getting irritated. Cut the sentimental crap before I cut you down. Fight me, Hollow Issei replied. No, I'm done fighting. I won't fight myself. It won't get me anywhere in life, Issei replied. Why aren't you attacking me? I nearly killed you every time we fought and took over your body. Nearly used your sacred gear against everybody, Hollow Issei said. You mean those who hurt me? Issei said. Huh, what? Issei smiled. You were trying to protect me, weren't you? The day when the mask appeared and you tried to slash Rias. Hollow Issei just sat there in silence. I owe you big time, you know. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been able to protect those who are previous to or are precious to me as much as I did. Enough, Hollow Issei said. Hollow Issei tried to punch Issei, but Issei smiled and hugged his hollow self. Thank you. I wouldn't be there without you, so thank you. <laughs> you you finally figured it out, huh? Hollow Issei said. The hollows Issei's mask started to crack and crumbled away, revealing a hollow's eyes, crying tears of joy. I'm happy. I'm happy you finally accept me. Take my power, no, take our power, and show the world not to mess with the Red Dragon Emperor. But know this, you're part of the generation which grows strong and quicker than most. You will without the question get more than you bargained for. Hollow Issei replied. Hollow Issei disappeared, leaving Issei alone in his subconscious, but with a heart that is now whole once again. Issei exists in subconscious and wakes up in the real world better than ever. Issei can feel the power his other self left for him. He knows what he has to do. Issei places his hand on his face and manifests the mask. It appears and he feels the power go through him. Incredible. Much, so much power. You've surpassed the armor promotions greatly. Congratulations, Drake replied. Issei lets... Issei lets out a victory war which scales the other four and makes them rush over. They appear behind him. Oh no, the mask has appeared. Issei turns around. Hey everyone. Issei, you did it? Yakuza says, yes. How? Ari said. I have you to thank for that. Ari blushed slightly. How did I do that exactly? Ari was still confused. Just a while ago, Issei was losing control and now he mastered it? Your advice on forgiving myself and accepting what I am. 
And Ross Weiser replies, I am Mahalo, the Red Dragon Emperor, a pawn of Rhea's Grimmery, and most importantly, I'm me, and that's what I accept and embrace. They all smile. Welcome back, Issei, Ross Weiser replied. Thank you. And Ari, yeah. What's the next step of my training, Issei said. Timing. Let's see how long you can wear the mask. The more that you practice, the longer you can use the holified state. Let's start away. Only two weeks till the raiding game, you know. Let's do this, Issei says. Both start training and Ari holified herself to match Issei. Think Issei thinks to himself. So glad she can't see my red face right now. Damn, she's cute, Issei replied. I think she's better fit for you than the others. Ha <laughs> ha, Drake replied. Focus, Drake. Usually I'm the one telling you to focus. <clears throat> They begin, with pra they begin with practicing increasing Issei's time limit, then later how he can use Ascalon complied with his hollow powers. And same with the Dragon Shot. Issei didn't risk using Balance Breaker because he wanted to go step by step. The warring from his inner hollow self burned into his memory. Combining hollow powers with Drag's powers might be too much. This continued for almost two weeks. He could wear those. He could wear his mask for at least an hour, and his energy-based attacks were now blackish red. His secondary dragon shot type attack was now called Ciro Shot, and the slash wave released from Ascalon is now called Hollow Dragon Talon. Issei changed his dress break to spell break. He could nullify small attacks based on energy and magic, but physical attacks and weapons were not affected. The two had a break after Issei hit his limit. I'll get something to eat. Be right back, I replied. I'll just, uh, wait here, Issei said. All right, giggled. After she left the training zone, Issei caught his breath and finally felt bad that Ari is doing so too much and he's just sitting here. Issei got up and went to go help her. When he reached the kitchen, he heard singing. It was Ari singing. Issei was charmed by her voice, and she didn't have to put a spell on him for that. Issei loved every second of her singing once she finished. Issei entered the kitchen and started helping, even though she told him to rest. This may be the sun, but I heard you singing. You have a talent. Would it be okay, Would it be okay if I heard you sing again, Issei said? Or he blushed at the compliment. She didn't know Issei heard her sing, but was glad someone loved it. His ability to hide his presence was very, very impressive. I don't see why not, Ari said. Ross Faisa, Azazel, and Yakuza were now no longer worried. Ross Faisa went on a shopping spree anywhere there was a sale. Azazel got to relax in Kyoto, and Yakuza brought back Koho home. In those two... In those remaining two weeks, Issei and Ari got to spend time with each other. One day before they leave, Issei and Ari stayed up and watched the shooting stars. Beautiful, Ari said. Yeah, hey, if you don't mind me asking, how were you born with hollow powers? Issei replied. Just before I was born, my mother was bitten by a hollow. People of my kind stopped it from killing us both. After I was born, my mother was too weak to continue living. All her energy was used up bringing me into the world and keeping herself from turning into a hollow. She resisted it till the end. I'm sorry, Issei said. No need. It's a fair question. As far as we know, you and I you and you and I are kind. Issei saw her blush a little, even under the starlight. He thanked his lucky stars for his ability to see in the dark. Issei, will you visit again soon? Ari replied. I believe I will. After all, you helped you help and Lady Yakuza helping me. I owe you both a great deal. Then wanna go on a date after your raiding game? Ari replied, You know, I would love to. I'm not afraid anymore, Issei replied. You just said, you know, copycat. <laughs> Sly Fox. But cute, Issei said. Ari looked gorgeous in the starlight. He felt something. It was her love for the first time its real connection, unlike what he used to have with the others. You were right, us being two of a kind. Ari just sat there in surprise. We are hollows with hearts. Hollows with hearts. That is the most beautiful sentence I've ever heard. Who knew the Red Dragon Emperor was quite the poet, Ari replied. Both leaning on each other now during the starlight, the next morning Issei, Azazel, and Ross Vaisu, who is now carrying dozens of shopping bags, said farewell and went home. Azazel opened the door and Ross Vaisa, for Ross Vaisa, she goes in holding quite a few bags, Issei brings the rest. Want to stay for lunch, Azazel? Issei replies. Thanks for the offer, but I've been away from the Gregora for three weeks. I got a lot of catching up to do, Azazel said. Drop the case if you want to take the offer. Sure, kid. Take care. Leaves... Azazel leaves Issei and Ross Vaisa at his house. The two go straight to her room and Issei helps her unpack everything. Thanks for helping me unpack. Appreciate it, Ross Vaisa says. No problem. So, did a certain cute fox catch your eye, Ross Vaisa? She winks, causing Issei to go completely red. Not gonna lie, I'm going on a date with her after the raiding game. The others immediately burst in. What? Reyes replied. Uh, well, hello to you too, Issei said. And that's the end of chapter 8, Acceptance. 
that's where we're going to end off the video for now. Thank you guys for all the amazing support on this series. And you guys already know the like goal. It's 500 likes. Once again, what if Naruto was betrayed? Hopefully it will come out in the next video or it'll come back after the final part of what if Issei finally lost it. But thank you guys for all the support. Tell me some stories or just link me some stories down to the uh, down in the comment section down below if you guys want to hear something specific or just something you want to hear with my voiceover or something that somebody did. You get my point, etc. So thank you guys once again for all the support. Let's try to hit some 500 likes. Thank you to the new channel members who joined. So if you guys don't know what the channel membership button is, it's a little blue button right next to the subscribe button. I tell you guys when I upload when you join the channel memberships. So thank you so much for all the support. Once again, 22,000 subscribers. Once again, it's probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Just thank you all for the support. Without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Finally Lost It Part 4, The Finale. Let's try to hit 600 likes for this video. If you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button and it says join channel member. Thank you guys so much for the support and I want your opinion for the next series. What should I call it? What if Issei went rogue or what if Issei went solo? I'll repeat that again. What if Issei went rogue or what if Issei went solo? It's up to you guys to decide. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 9. Let the games begin. Well, hello to you too, Issei says. You're going on a date just weeks after breaking up with us? What the hell, Issei? Rhea says. Okay, first of all, I just got back home after three whole weeks and this is what you do? Second, we're done, remember? Whoever my date isn't anyone's concern but my own. And another thing, why do you all randomly burst through the door? Should I put salt lines under the door now? Rias came to realize as soon as he got home, she questioned him without welcoming him home after three weeks. Right, sorry, Rias replied. Rias turns around and was about to exit. Wait, here, Issei says. Issei opens a portal to a pocket dimension and pulls out a few bags. I got some souvenirs for everyone. This one's for you, Rias. You still collecting animal figures, right? The little rabbit is the latest addition, Issei says. Rias holds the little glass rabbit figurine. Thank you, Issei, and welcome home. Thanks. Glad to be back. All right, everyone grab your stuff. I'm going to check on mom and dad. Hey, wait, you didn't tell us how your training went. Did you control that power? Yuna replied. Issei smirked, then manifested the mask, but kept his eyes closed to avoid scarring the others, especially after how they feared him last time. Yeah, it's all under control, Yuna, Issei replied. Issei makes the mask disappear. Have fun, you guys, Issei says. Issei, you didn't call us for three weeks. Do you still hate us? Akino replied. Honestly, no. Not anymore. I did some soul searching, and I'm okay now. And I'm not lying, Akino, Issei says. So what now, Gasper replied. Issei will tell us about the new girl, Konako said. Not a girl, a woman. He blushed a bit and smiled as he placed a hand where she kissed him. An incredible woman. Issei then leaves to see his parents. Rias was hurt that Issei found someone so quickly. He referred to her as an amazing woman. He never said that to her. Perhaps she was too afraid at the time. He moved on, Azia said. Still kind of missed the attention he gave us through, but it's for the best, Zenobia said. So Ross Visa, how did he control his powers, Ravel said. I don't know how he did it, because Azazel, Lady Yakuza, and I weren't around him at the time, but after he did control it, he looked happier. I could tell you, I could tell what we experienced when in the first week. He trained the other two weeks to extend the amount of time he used with his hollow powers. Now the real other question on everyone's mind. The girl? Russell replied. The girl, everyone said. Ha, <laughs> nope. I don't know much about her, sorry, Ross Weiser replied. She said teasingly, then left the room with a skip. With a skip, I'm her step. With a skip on her step. Well, she's definitely giddy. Being around all those happy yokai children must have been the cause, Akano said. I wondered about the new girl, though. Issei goes to see his parents and tells them about Kyoto. He told them about their internship that was a type of self-management and helping others with it. It wasn't, complete li it wasn't a complete lie, so they believed it. Issei brought a lot of desserts from there, and Konoko can be seen eating sweets in her natural habitat. After Issei unpacked and did what needed to be done, he went to the others and prepared for the raiding game. The day arrived, and they went to the underworld. They got through all the formalities and then let the game begin. Team Rias vs Team BL. Both teams on opposing sides, on a large platform. Looks like someone got a new pawn, Issei said. Sarah Orr got a trump card, too, it seems. Ha! 
I welcome it, Issei says. Greetings, everyone. I'm Azazel, and I'll be in charge of the commentary. Of course he is, Rhea says. Looks like we are in for a surprise, folks. On Team Gremor, we have the Red Dragon Emperor, and on Team ba Beale, we have a new member, but next to nothing is known about him. Looks like Saurorg came prepared with his own trump card for the fight. Now, without further delay, let's begin. Ugh. Alright, next up is the pawn of Rhea's Grimmery, versus the Bishop Beale. My bishop and I came to take you down, Saurorg said. This should be interesting. Balance Breaker. Drag. Welch Dragon, Balance Breaker. Issei now in his Balance Breaker faces Biel Bishop. Saurorg's bishop is a beautiful woman with an hourglass figure and long wavy blonde hair. She looked like Isid seductively and begins to strip. What the? Azazel says. Saurorg, what is the meaning of this? Rhea says. The perfect way to take East hit down. Issei just face palms. <laughs> the sound of metal hitting metal was echoing due to silence. What's the matter, Red Dragon Emperor? Do you not want to ravage me? Bishop replied. She caresses her almost completely nude body in front of him. Yeah, no. Issei appears behind her and knocks her out with a chop to the nape. Well, that was unexpected, Saurorg said. Issei then spreads his wings over to avoid her as to avoid any further embarrassment for everyone. That would have worked on the old me, but no more. I'm not a foolish pervert I used to be, Issei said. The crowd went nuts at the revelation. The grab and dragon changed. The kids were slightly disappointed but still cheered for Issei. He was in awe about how the kids instantly accepted the, him com the new him completely. You changed a lot, Issei, in so little time. Care to share? Sarag replied. Beat me and I'll talk, Issei said. Very well then, Sarag replied. Things are getting heated up now. On to the next match. As Akino was against Sarag's queen-in-law. Zenobia, Rosvice, and Kiba fought Sarag and lost despite their best efforts. Issei was now getting a little pissed off and eager to beat Sarag now. Next match. Issei vs. Kushina Abaddon. Akino may have lost to her, but will the Red Dragon Emperor win? Begin. Azazel says, Please put all your power into offense, defense if you want to survive. <laughs> Tough talk, killed, Kushina says. I warned you. Drag, Balance Breaker. Promotion, Knight. Issei's armor changed to his aerodynamic thin armor and charges at her full speed. She couldn't even register his speed before Issei stopped right in front of her. Promotion to Rook. Issei now again changing his armor to bulky and more durable with greatly enhanced strength punched Kushina directly but he hit nothing. He only saw her disappearing into a green light. I see what that happened here as Izzel said. I made her retire. That punch would have killed her Issei. I can see it. The anger in you. The hatred for me after my match against your team went down. I apologize. My anger took over. I was saving my new armor promotions for you, but it looks like the secret's out, Issei said. Right, Sarag replied. Sarag then says to watching those in charge. I request a battle royale. Two kings versus two pawns, Sarag says. The crowd cheers at the idea. I have just received the news and it has been decided. The battle royal has been granted. Azia, I want you to stay behind. I'm sorry if the words seem cruel, but this is a tough fight. I understand. Please be careful. Rias and Issei, along with Cyrorg and his pawn, teleported to a field surrounded by a barrier strong enough to endure the battle. So who's your pawn? I'll show you. Do it, Regulus. The pawn transformed into a human, a very large golden lion. Is that the Lion of Nenma? Azazel says, yes, my sacred gear and pawn. I found him and added him into my parage. This is my surprise, Cyrorg said. Issei, I'll fight the lion, you can have Cyrorg, Rhea says. Let's do this. Balance Breaker, Promotion, Knight. Welch Dragon, Balance Breaker, Promotion, Welch Sonic Boost, Knight, Drake says. Issei charged with nearly supersonic speeds, then promoted to Rook, and engaged in a fistfight against Cyrorg. Rhea's kept the lion at bay using her power of destruction. Issei's Rook armor was dishing out heavy damage, but so was Cyrorg. The crowd went into wild at the scene. The shockwaves from each punch thrown was as rapid as a machine gun. Both were still at it, even after showing signs of fatigue. Before Cyrorg could throw another punch, the lion of Nema crashed into him. He got up and looked at Rhea's, and still and Issei still standing while his knees were beginning to shake. Master, please don me, the lion says. No, I told you that that'll only happen if there's an emergency in the underworld, Sarah said. L Do it, Issei replied. Issei, are you crazy? The decision could kill you, Rias replies. 
We promised to fight each other at our best. Sorry, Rias. Come on, Sire Org. Don him and fight me without holding back, Issei says. Ha! <laughs> it seems I owe you an apology, Issei. I did hold back, but no more. Regulus, balance, break, Sire Org says. The lion became a suit of golden armor, with Sauroorg and his power increase exponentially. Still going to fight him? Hell yeah I am, Issei says. Issei boosted his power to his limit and charged in. Sauroorg blocked with a small punch and Issei's armor was shattered as he went flying backwards. Issei, Rhea said. She ran him and checked if he was injured. Just a lot of bruises. His armor took most of the damage. Are you doing okay? Rhea replied. Yeah, but my body is aching from the pain. How many Phoenix Tears do we have? Two, Rias replied. Mind if I have one? <laughs> sure, Issei. Issei took a Phoenix Fear in drinks. His bruises heal and his energies replenished. So do you give up, Issei? Pfft, like hell. I also have another trick up my sleeve. Issei gets up and walks forward, then summons his mask after dispelling his armor. What the hell? Sarorg says. Get ready, Ascalon. Issei says, Dre, blade! Issei grabs Ascalon when released from his sacred gear. Issei disappeared from sight in an instant and reappeared behind Sauroorg, ready to slash him. Sauroorg couldn't react in time and was cut by Ascalon. The mane of his Regulus armor was cut clean off by revealing the long slash mark on his back. Sauroorg jumped forward to avoid another attack. What kind of power is this? Issei said with his dual hollow voice. This is my trump card. Should my promotions not be enough, it's my holification. And the move from earlier is called Flash Step. Who taught you that? Rhea said. A very cute fox in Kyoto. Ari really is an excellent teacher. So that's her name, Rhea says. You continue to surprise me, Hyoto. Now that I know how fast you are, I can fight accordingly. Bring it on. Those eyes tell me to go all out. Issei once again used flashed up and slashed as Cyber Orc, who was able to block Issei's attack this time. He caught Issei's arm and punched him in the face. A part of the mass was broken, but Issei repaired it. Issei's durability in this state was good, all things considering his training paid off. Issei and Sarorg were now in close-to-close -close combat, but this time Sarorg had to avoid getting cut down too. Sarorg needed to get some distance to think of a new plan. He saw Rias not too far away. He condensed some energy in his fist and launched it at Issei. He dodged. You missed. Wasn't aiming for you. Looks behind him and sees the condensed energy moving towards Rias. No! Issei appears in front of her and takes the hit. Issei? Issei looks up to her. Those eyes. Rias' thoughts. Those eyes. They scare me. I see the anger. I see so much they see right through me. Issei, I'm sorry. I wish I could take it all back. Rias was scared, silent by terrifying look in his eyes. He obviously saw that he was scaring her, so he went back to fight Sauroorg. That was a dirty trick, Issei replied. Sorry, I was never planning on actually letting it hit her. She is family, and I'm here to fight you too. I just needed some time to figure out how to beat you. Then I'm going to take you down before you can take us down. Get ready. Issei powers up and confines his Sura with Ascalon. Hollow Dragon Talon. Issei released a blackish-red energy wave that hit Sauror directly and damaged his armor. Issei constantly used flashed up and zero shots. The barrage of attacks continued to damage Sauror beyond his expectations. Wow, Rhea says. The crowd was going nuts. I knew we were strong, but this is unbelievable. Sauror is having one tough time, as Azel says. Sauror was not getting frustrated, but hanging in there. Why aren't you using... The power of your sacred gear like I am, Sire report. I can't risk that. This power is new to me, so if I combine it with Drake, then who knows what'll happen. Then you won't be able to win. I won't let you take me down. Overdrive. Sire Org was now into overdrive, using all of his energy, even his life force became became stronger. Too strong for Issei to handle now. Oh shit. Issei, watch out, Rhea said. Huh? Just then, Sauroorg surprisingly teleported to Issei and punched his right through his chest. The crowd went silent as they saw the red wings emerge from Issei's back. No, that was his blood spraying everywhere. Rhea's covered his mouth from shock. Rhea covered her mouth from shock. What? No, as Azel said. Sauroorg powered down and came into his senses. He sees Issei right in front of him with a hole in his chest. No, no what have I done? Sauroorg replied. He removed his hand. Issei's... Issei's fell face first. Rias ran up to him and used the second phoenix tear on him, but the wound was too big for the phoenix tear to heal. It seems they aren't perfect at after all. What have I done? Sarorik says, Issei, can you hear me? Issei! Issei was on the verge of death, and again with the hole in his torso, Issei floats in his dark subconscious. Well, it looks like this is it. I'm sorry, Rias. Everyone. All things considered, it was a good life. I got to live a short one. Issei then starts hearing a voice. Issei! Issei! Who's there? 
Rhys, is that you? Issei, come back to us. Is it you? Sorry, but I'm done for. Hollow Issei, back so soon? Jeez, dude. Issei just sits there and silent. You know what you have to do if you want to see Aerie again. You promised her a date, remember? Hollow Issei replied. Issei begins to have flashbacks of her. That's right, I promised her. I also promised to beat Cyrog and help Rhys win. Then get up. Get up and fight, Hollow Issei said. I will. I will fulfill my promises. Rhys is crying while Cyrog shakes from the pain and regret. The crowd watches Issei lays there motionless. Irina falls to her knees as her childhood friend bleeds on the ground. Azia, thump, numb at the sight. No, Issei, please come back, Rhys says. Just then, Rhys fills the air and begins to sting the gust of wind. She looks at the source and sees. Issei, is that you? Oh no. Rhys and Sarah, get out of there now. All of the ultimate class devils and above. We need your attention. Contain him now. Rhys couldn't comprehend what was happening. She gets up and moves closer to Issei who stood there motionless. She placed her hand on his face, or should I say mask. It was cold and rough to the torch. Sarah also get up. Issei, are you okay? Sarag replies, Issei put his hand out on Ocelot and came at him. He swung the blade with such force the ground broke apart. The wind sent Rias flying, but Sarag caught her. Is that even Issei anymore? We need to leave. Now. Issei lets out a roar while releasing waves of energy. Shit is about to go down. And that's the end of chapter 9. Let the games begin. Chapter 10. Run. Issei looked at Sarag and Rias with those. They were darker. In the eyes of an abyss. Issei, come back to your senses, Rius replied. Issei let out another roar and charged the Ciro between his horns. Sarah instinct screamed at him to run and he obeyed. Issei fired the Ciro and just barely missed Rius and Sarah The Ciro went off into the distance after a few seconds a bright flash was seen followed by a massive mushroom cloud. The barrier began to crack from an attack. Issei fired another one and again he dodged. Again, they dodged. Another mushroom cloud appears far off in the distance. We need to leave right now. Yeah, you think? You owe me an explanation for what the hell is happening, Sarag says. Yeah, sounds a bite rough, Rhea replies. Both. At the same time, we retire. Both were enveloped by a green light and teleported back just as Issei hit them with his third zero. Issei then started firing again and again and hit the barrier each time. It was beginning to crack but not break. Issei summoned his boosted gear and his boosted and boosted his power. He charged up another zero for a few seconds and fired at the barrier. It completely shattered. The barrier is destroyed. Everyone evacuate immediately. Get the woman and children to save the small dimension is next to fall, Azazel says. Azazel flew out of the end of his artificial balance breaker. He was followed by Seraphald, Grafia, and Serzax. What is happening, Azazel? Gra Grafia says. I'll explain everything later. Stop him as he enters the Joggernaut Drive, Azazel says. Hang on, Issei. We are coming, Serzax says. They entered the dimension and surrounded him. Issei, without a second of hesitation, used the flash step and started to slash everyone. They were able to put up more than a fight than Sour Oregon actually pushed Issei to his limits. Issei would split Sir Zach's spheres made of P. O. power of destruction almost every time. Azazel would use his spear for mid-range physical attacks, but Issei would be able to counter-attack easily. He would then he would kick Azazel hard enough to break his armor, revealing a beaten and bruised Azazel. Seraphal created water dragons and forced alone would hurt him, but he would heal immediately. Gravia also tried to restrain him, but couldn't without hurting him. They had no choice. They had to stop him with greater force. Azazel was down, but Seraphal, Sir Zex, and Gravia pushed to the limit and attacked Issei simultaneously. Sir Zex, now covered in his signature power of destruction, attacked Issei relentlessly. Gravia created a magic circle and increased gravity on Issei only. Seraphal created more water dragons and hit him harder. Issei released a howl of pain, but Drake called out. Everyone, run! He's about to use the Juggernaut Drive. Oh shit, Azazel says. Azazel found the will to fight and appeared behind Issei only to take a zero shot to the gut. Luckily, to only took minor damage. Issei then began to enter Juggernaut Drive. His body became much larger, but remained skinny. The red armor manifested around his body and changed the color to black with white spikes. His eyes were like... Looking into hell itself, his tail was long and deadly. The hole in his chest had a flame. We need help, Sir Zek said. Issei's power in his holified juggernaut drive alone was too much. The artificial dimension collapsed and everyone was back in the arena. By then it was empty as everyone had left. If we don't stop him here, then he'll destroy the underworld, Gravia said. I called for backup. Who did you call? Incoming, Sir Zek. Issei now supercharged his Sarah Blast and was fire at them until a blue streak of light came down on top of Issei, a voice echoes. Divide! 
You called Volley? Who else would be willing to stop him? Volley enters his juggernaut drive and continues to divide Issei's power. Azazel, what happened to Hyoto? This power, it's too much, Volley replies. Volley continues to divide and Issei begins to shrink down to his normal size. He eventually turns back to his Vastroloda form and then chains shot out of magic circles on the ground and restrained him. Issei again charged up another Suro, but Arthur showed up and cut off his horns. The Suro disappeared and Issei's mask started to crack and then shattered. Issei fell to the ground and so did Volley. His Juggernaut Drive then broke into pieces and he was back to himself but breathing heavily. He vomited after pushing his limits. Issei lay on the ground with a hole in his chest. The chains let him go and return to the magic circle from which Kuro Kuroka emerged. Volley, are you okay? Kuroka says, no, not really, but I'll be fine, Volley says. Is the Red Dragon Emperor okay? Arthur replied. Sir Zix came to Issei and Kuroka came to his aid as well. She saw the hole in his chest but Issei is still alive somehow. This makes no sense, Kuroka says. Sir Zex picks up one of the pieces of the mask besides Issei. What the hell happened to you, Issei? Sir Zex replied. A few, par a few more portals appeared from which Sauro Org and Team Rias came out, covered in bandages. Yakuza and Ari came out of the other portals. Yakuza and her true nine-tailed fox state and Ari in her hollow state. They looked at Issei who lay there in the hole in his chest. It happened, didn't it? Yakuza said. I'm afraid so, Lady Yakuza, Azazel replied. Before anyone else could say anything or try anything, the mass pieces started to float and turn into mist. The mist hovered over Issei, then filled the hole in his torso, basically regenerating him. Everyone looked at Issei. Ultra high speed regeneration? Issei, now you're just showing off, Arn replied. Issei shot up and started Elrond. They looked at him with wide eyes and froze up except for Ari. Please tell me I didn't kill anyone, Issei said. They all sighed with relief. Grafia smacked him on the head. You have a lot of explaining to do, mister. Ouch, jeez, that hurt, Issei replied. So what happened, Ari said. Something incredibly... Something incredible and horrific. It's truly a miracle that no one is dead. Sir Zex pulled a footage from the magic camera which was used to record the raiding game. Those who didn't see it went pale at the sight. Issei looked sad but smiled in the end. I'm glad everyone's alright. Yeah, can I get someone to heal me? As Azazel said. Sorry, Issei replied. Don't worry about it. I've handled worse. Everyone looks at him and thinks, yeah right, you nearly died within five minutes. Azia used her twilight healing to heal Azazel. Volley gets up. Okay, so Hyoto, what was that power and how long have you been hiding it? Volley said. Well, I suppose I owe everyone an explanation. I was testing out my flight speed and duration in my balance breaker two months ago. I reached the coast of Japan. I was so tired after flying at supersonic speeds. I rested on the grass, but then I encountered a hollow. I didn't sense its presence until it was too late. It bit me and I got turned into a hollow in the way. I trained with Ari, who mastered her powers long ago. Lady Yakuza, Zazel, and Ross Vaisa also helped me out. Everyone looks at the... Everyone looks at the three except for Ari. You three knew this might happen, everyone said? It was a small possibility, but I had faith Issei would be able to control it, Yakuza replied. And by the looks of it, he did. How so, Rhea said. Because he didn't actually critically injure anyone. Even though he could have killed us all, he was most definitely on defense. Once he combined his hollow and juggernaut drive, he was using Drake's power, and you know what that means, Azazel says. Everyone had a question mark on their heads. It means that I was able to take control to some extent. Issei managed to control his hollow part while I controlled the juggernaut drive. Speaking of which, Albion and Volley, thank you. It feels so un it feels so much strange to be thanked by the red one, Albion said. I agree, but I'm thankful for your aid. You two managed to bring my partner back to normal. And it took everything we had just to do that, Volley said. I wonder, if both Drake and Issei ever lost control again, then... Greyfear replied, It'll take Great Red and Orphis to take Issei down, Sir Zek said. Issei went pale. Well, we won't have to worry about that, Issei replied. What do you mean? The last time I used Juggernaut Dried, I lost a part of my life force. I would live a century at most compared to the usual 10,000 devil years. But now, I... Did it again. <laughs> Issei's face went blank and so in everyone else's, Drake then spoke. Actually, you won't die anytime soon. I analyzed it and used you most of your hollow power and stamina this time. You'll live. Everyone released a sigh in relief. So who won the game? It was a tie. We both retired at the same time to avoid getting blasted into oblivion. Sorry, said Issei. So now we better inform the public everything is alright. What do we do about the three Chaos Brigade members? Zex replied. Don't worry about me. I'm done with them. In fact, I'll join under the condition that we are all pardoned and I get to fight Hyoto again. 
Jeez, you're a battle maniac, Issei says. It took all of my power and juggernaut drive just to turn you back to normal. And that's with everyone working together. I got a lot of training to do, Volley said. Well, considering you three did help us save the internet without any casualties, I will agree to your terms. As do I, but you will keep under observation, is that clear? The three nod. What about Keo Keo, Biku, and LeFay? Grafia said. They will agree to your condition. Arthur replied. Now that the raiding game was interrupted, what will happen? Ravel said. <sighs> Live to fight another day, I suppose, Sarag says. Everyone continues to talk. Issa gets up and his legs are shaking. Just before he falls to Ari in the stand, don't push yourself, Ari says. Thanks. Once I recover, I'll take you on that date, I promise. Sarag sounds good, but one tiny concern. What? Issa says. The girls are looking at us in envy while the black Nekomata is lusting after you. Can you tell me what the last part is about? Uh, no, Issei said. My name is Kuroka, and he's the future father of my kids, Kuroka says. Again, I never agreed to that. After seeing how powerful you became, I won't stop trying to have your kids, Kuroka said. After seeing how powerful I became, you really think you can? Oh, snap, Ari replied. Sorry, Kuroka, but it's not going to happen. I'm one, I'm a one-woman kind of guy now. Everyone except for the RC, as Azel Nyakasa gasped. Wait, what? I thought you wanted a harem, Kuroka replied. Nope. I grew up and willing to have a harem just isn't my thing. Gravius or Zek Seraphal in Sour Org look at Issei. Volley and Arthur smile at the new and improved Issei. Kuroka was feeling kind of down. Hey, there's no need to feel so down. I'm sure you can find the right guy to have a family with. Issei, I have an idea. Sit down for a moment. Issei sits down on the rubble and created his sword to swing. Ari grabs Kuroka and talks to her in the distance. What's this about? Look, I know you like him for reasons other than to bring a good into the world due to low numbers, but then again, so do I. So how about I try to convince him to date us both? I don't mind sharing since that's how us yokai do things anyway, Ari replies. Kuroka has a gentle and sweet remark on her face. Thanks. I never got your name. It's Ari. Now, we're back with Issei. So Issei, care to explain what you really meant by one woman lover? The ORC members except for Ravel and Ross Vice were scared out thinking that Issei would tell them about what happened. I came to the realization that the love of my life, the girls in our team, wouldn't work out. Rius is my master, and I'm just a low-class pawn. A relationship might cause too much blackish, and I don't want anyone thinking that I would give more attention to one or the other. All of the... All of this would have ripped them up, ripped the team apart, and none of us want that. We are better off as friends and teammates. But you don't love Rhea, Scrafia said. I do love her, but I'm not in love. There's a difference. And us being a couple was what the underworld decided. After Riser no longer being in the picture, I was put on a pedestal right next to her. A forced relationship doesn't work out for anyone, Issei said. I am saddened by the news, but your logic is accurate. Things did not turn out exactly as you describe it. Rias, are you okay with this? Yes, we all accepted it and it's the right thing to do, Rias replied. It's amazing how clearly one can think when they don't feel the lust in Sir Zex. I'm sorry, but the Grab and Dragon is done for. Issei says, what? Issei, the children love you, Gravefear replied. After what they saw, I doubt it. I probably traumatized them. A dark cloud loomed over him. How about a reboot? Everyone looks at her. Think about it. What better way to get to know the new you? We can see the grab and dragon thing was a test of sorts, and we are trying other ideas. That might work, and Issei and his hollow state was pretty badass. Scary, but badass, Azel, Azel said. I can't tell if that's a compliment, Issei replied, or in Kuroka return. We should clean up this mess and go home, Rospicer replied. Leave that to us. Issei and everyone else go home. Once you recover, I want to know the real reason you changed. No... One changes so much quickly unless they suffered, Grafia replied. All of Team Rias froze. Volley, Kuroka, and Arthur were confused. Yeah, that's fair, Issei said. You too, Azazel. Yes, ma'am, Azazel said. Should I ask, Kuroka replied? No, not yet. You'll find out soon enough, Ari replied to Kuroka. And that is the end of Part 10. Run. Chapter 11. Issei and everyone went home. All of the members of Team Volley followed. Sir Zex and Kuroka was no longer marked as a stray due to her aid in saving the underworld. Cyrorg started training in every way he could after healing. Yakuza went back to the Kyoto, but Ari remained by Issei's side mainly to make sure his inner hollow didn't take over or anything like that, but the other reason of course is that she loves him. Issei slept for almost three days after the fatigue hit hard. Ari and the rest of the team rest of Team Rias and Irina got to know her during the time. So you're the one Ari, huh? Rias says. Ari, kind of nervous at the interrogation. The one how? 
the one Issei likes, and he says he's going on a date with you soon, Nakano replies. Ori was happy that Issei likes him back. There was no denying it. Yeah, we agreed to go on a date after the game, but it's best that he recovers first. Also, I didn't get your names, Ori said. The ORC and Irina introduced themselves, except for Ross Faisa. When the Rias introduced herself at the end, to which Ari holified, they backed off and Ari immediately turned back to her normal self once she took a deep breath. Rias? Grimmery? Akino Hijima? Konako Toju? And Kiba Yuta? Ari replied. She said with hate in her voice. Wait, why are you so angry? Rias said. You heard him. I replied. The four were now gloomy. Now I understand your anger. You know about it, huh? Kiba says. Ori calms down. Yes, I do. I need to know to find out how his hollow powers was triggered to what extent. He had to tell me, Ari said. What else did he say, Akira replied, that he forgives you for? Everyone went still. Less than a month ago, he nearly killed Rias. Irina... Issei forgave them and did something even harder than that. He forgave himself, which is something far too, far few good people do, Ari says. Meaning, Ozzy replied? He accepted the part of him that caused him trouble and overcame them. For example, his lust caused him for trouble, at, but after controlling it and overcoming it, he is a far better person. The whole three weeks, he looked at Lady Yakuza in our eyes instead of our bodies. He's a real gentleman, Ari replies. He shared everything, Zenobia said. Again, yes, he had to. There wasn't anyone really helping him because no one here really experienced what he did. Don't get me wrong. I know all of your mistakes and he tried to make things right by being there for him, but he needed something else, Ari said. Or someone else, Ross Weiser replied. She winked at Ari and Ari blushed. I don't want to sound boastful. Sorry. She teased him too after they turn returned. He went red and not from Los. Konaka said. I wonder how you connected so deeply in just three weeks, Rabble replied. We are two of a kind, after all, Ari said. She went into her hollow state. But both of your hollowfications look different, Kiva said. I was born with mine. Isi was turned into one directly and from the most powerful type of hollow. I'm as strong as a high-class devil, but he's ultimately his ultimate class easily. But combined with the boosted gear, Akuna replied, Devil King level or above, no question. It took Sir Zex Lucifer, his queen, Azazel, and Seraphal Leviathan to stop him. And he was mostly in control, which is honestly amazing, Rhea said. Hollow and dragon powers are fueled by emotions, mainly rage, but forgiveness and self-control greatly help in mastering the hollow within, Nari replied. How were you born with them? Irina said. My mother was bitten by a hollow at a very short time before I was born. My body accepted the hollow powers, but my mother couldn't. She passed away and I hated my powers because of it. But then I realized that it wasn't my fault or my mother, so I accepted the hollow and mastered it. You let go of anger and so did Issei, Rias replied. Yep. So what will you do about Lady what Marie Grafia said? Tell her the truth, obviously. We accept any punishment she has for us, Zenobia said. Everyone agreed. I hope she doesn't punish you guys, Ari replied. But don't you hate us for what we did? I am angry about... But if Issei can forgive you guys, I have no ill will towards you, Ari replies. After a few moments of silence, so any plans on your date, Irina said? Not really. There's a fall festival coming up soon, so we might try that. What did you talk to my sister about, Konako said. Well, that's between us for now. Us cats and foxes must stick together, Ari says. She replied with a smirk and a slight blush. After a day or two, Issei had recovered completely and everyone met up with Azazel. Ari joined, the team, joined them to report what kind of training Issei went through. When they went to visit Sir Zex, Grafia, and Seraphal, they gave them a look with the demand of the truth. So who will start? I will, but I request keeping an open mind and know that I'm not angry and happy with my life. Very well, continue, Gravia said. If you want to explain their part in the events that led to Issei being heartbroken, his outburst resulting in dragon shots being fired at the sea and the moon, getting bitten by a hollow, depression, change in personality, hollification, training with Ari, Yakuza, Azazel, and Rossweiss in Kyoto for three weeks. That's quite the story, Graf That's quite the story, Gravia, Gravia replied. Rias, Akino, Kiba, and Konako, I'm honestly disappointed, but you're in luck. Issei holds no grudge against any of you. In addition, you did try to make things right when you saw your mistakes. You are let off with a warning, Sir Zek said. Ari, we owe you a great deal for helping Issei control his powers, which led him to not killing everyone in the underworld in his hollow drive. I like the name, hollow drive. Sounds fearsome, Issei said. Yeah, I'm glad you like it, Seraphal replied. 
So now we decide on the Red Dragon reboot. We can't decide that in due time. But please, no more perverted stuff. Wholesome family entertainment is better for everyone, Issei replied. How about some sexual innuendo for the adults? Depends. How many are we talking about, Issei said. At least a couple per season should it become a show like before, as Hazel said. Yeah, I can work with that, Issei replied. I guess that concludes the meeting. Quickest meeting ever, Seraphal said. Thank God, Zerzex replied. Saw that coming, Rhea said. Also, FYI, the match was decided as a draw. You and Cyrorg can fight for the championship title next time. Agreed, Rhea said. The meeting concluded and everyone went home. So Issei, you know what to do now, right? Ari said. Yes, I do. When would you like to go on our date? Issei said. There's a winter festival in Kyoto coming up. How about that? Ari replied. Sounds perfect, Issei said. Okay. I remember our one and only date. Akino said, you mean the one in which Rias, Azia, Gaspar, Konoko, and Zenobia followed us in their atrocious stealth? Atrocious stealth, Issei said. The five mentions looked away in embarrassment. Piece of advice, guys. Follow us on our date and you'll see the hollow drive fully unleashed, Issei said. Issei manifest his vatrolator mass this time. Yes, kindly refrain from doing that. Ari uses partial hollow transformation. Make sure not to do anything. Everyone gulped. Yeah, we'll just stay here, everyone said. Smart choice, Issei replied. And that's the end of chapter 11. Chapter 12. After putting the fear of the hollows in Team Rias and Irina, Issei and Ari spent time together daily. The fall festival was days away. Issei and Ari went to the park and practiced a date of sorts since none of the two ever went on an actual date. Issei's first date, well, killed him, and his date with Akana was very insensitive for her to beat up her opponent alongside Rias. The two sat on the side of the bench and enjoyed each other's company when suddenly a little cat jumped on Issei's lap. Aw, how cute, Ari said. Yeah, wait a second. This cat has two tails. Kuroka, is that you? Kuroka turned back into her Nekomana form and put it a pose, but you guessed it. Shh. Care to explain why you interrupted our date? You kept me waiting with no answer about our agreement, Kuroka said. What agreement? Oh, right. Issei, Kuroka and I agree to both go out with you if you're willing to accept, but I told you and everyone I would prefer to just be with one woman. Just hear her out. You might change your mind. Looks like Kuro Issei looks like Kuroka. Okay, sure. What do you have to say? Kuroka perked up. Look, now that I may come off as a hoe, but that's not the case. I really do like you. I only actually all... I only act all flirty and show off my body in hopes that you'll just lust after me. I know it sounds wrong, but I do like you. I'm being direct since you're not driven by lust anymore. And you're okay with this, Ari? Issei said, I am. If our relationship doesn't work out, then you'll have Kuroka by your side, Ari says. You should have a backup plan for most things, but love isn't one of them, Issei said. I know, but she does like you, and so do I. Just think about it, okay? Well, who am I to break your hearts? Let's give it a shot, Issei said. Kuroka is really happy and turns back into a cat form in excitement. She's almost hyper and Issei tried to calm her down. He rubs her ears and she freezes, then changes into her neck of her form again. Issei stopped and saw a blushing Kuroka with a pout. Why did you stop, Kuroka said. I almost treated you like a cat rather than a person, sorry. Bitch, I'm both, Kuroka said. You're a person first and foremost, never forget that. You really have changed and matured mostly, and I like that about you, Kuroka said. Thanks, life improved for everyone after that, Issei said. I'll say, but can you please continue to scratch my ears? I really like it. If it makes you happy, then so be it. He fulfilled a request that she enjoyed it so much that she was completely relaxed on his lap. I looked at him with a pout of her own. What? Do me. Again? What? I messed you to scratch my ears. Those foxes love it too. Oh, thank goodness. I thought you meant something else. Someone is still a bit of a perv in his mind, huh? Kuroka said, Jeez, you're not helping, Issei said. Ha! Ah, come on, Issei. Do my ears too, I replied. Alright. He scratched both of their ears and ran his hands through their hair. Both were overtaken by amazing sensations. Oh, Issei, your hands feel so good. Issei was now starting to turn rest. Oh, yeah. Don't stop. Oh, yes. Issei basically had a stream coming out of his ears at this point. The moans and seductive words was becoming a bit too much. He decided to slow down and eventually stop. This way he comes down and the girls, uh, girls get their fill. Nice trick, Issei. You saw that, huh? No surprise there. Issei, Ari, and Kuroka went to his place to only find his team were packing their belongings. What are you guys doing? They're moving out, Zenobia said. How come? Kuroka replied. 
Because in case you and Ari move in when you're dating Issei, it'll be weird that most of his exes living under the same roof, Akano said. You guys don't have to do this. We can still live together as a family. No, Issei. We both know some of us can't stay. Everyone except for Ross, Vice, Irina, and Ravel hurt you. You dated Akano and I, almost connected with Konoko the same way. Those feelings will forever linger. Kiba and Gaspar are coming with us. I do me my night in my bush up by my side, Rhea said. Issei looks for Azia. Issei looks for Azia and Irina for help. Sorry, Issei, but they made up their minds, but Azia and I will stay. Half of the team in one place and half of the team in another? What about Zenovia and Ross Vaisa? Issei replied, they are staying here. Ari and Kuroka stayed silent and this was none of their business. Guys, wait, can you at least let Kodoko stay? Kuroka will be staying with us and it's the best that those two try to spend some time together. Kuroka looked at him in surprise. She won't like that one bit. I'll talk to her about it, no need to worry. Speaking of which, where is she? She's out getting some snacks. It's almost an hour now that we have noticed. Should we go look for her, Ari says? No, I'll go alone. She barely knows you and is a bit alert around Kuroka. I'll be back soon. I know we're failing a shopping spot. You two can make yourselves at home, Issei replied. Issei walks out the door to look for her. He found her sitting alone, not far from the park. Barely visible, but she looked down. Issei silently approached her. Hey, Konoko, you doing okay? Konoko was a bit startled. Oh, hey, I'm fine, Konoko said. Whenever girls say they are fine, it really means that they aren't. So what's bothering you? It's Kuroka coming back, isn't it? Yes. Kanako said, look, I know that you hate her for leaving you, but you don't know her side of the story. Why not talk to her? I'm afraid to. Afraid you'll get close to get hurt again? Yes. Preaching the chires. Preaching the choir, sister. I never got to fully apologize for everything I did to you. Considering my former perverted nature, I had all of all this coming. Look, I know your fear all too well, and it nearly killed me. Don't make my mistake. She'll only once be sisters again, you know. Issei said, how do you know? Earlier I asked Rias to let you stay and catch up with Kuroka. Kuroka was surprised by my request, but saddened immediately after fearing you would leave her like she had left you, Issei said. She had to leave? I believe so. I don't know her past, but I know she cares for you. Give her a chance. Konoko just stood there silent. You said that you don't want a relationship with two or more women at the same time. So what was that at the park? Konoko said. I'm dating Ari, but Kuroka seems to like me as well. Her confession was genuine, so who am I to break her heart? Issei said. So what will you do? Go out with the bottom of them as a trial? I'm not sure if I can handle two relationships. You did good with the rest of us. Up until that moment, I fucked up, Issei said. Not your fault. We all knew about your trauma, which you're responsible for, and still blamed you. Hey, forget about that. I'm over it. If I can get through all of that and still love you guys, then you can too. Konoko smiled. Thanks. I'll try. God. Come on, let's get some ice cream. Vanilla and chocolate chip, Konoko said. Cool. They picked up some ice cream and went back. Everyone was done packing and decided to have dessert together after dinner. Issei's parents were disappointed that half of them were moving out, but would visit as per the request. They welcomed Ari and Kuroka, who mag magically hid their fox slash cat ears and tails. Issei didn't want his parents to know about the supernatural things just yet. And that's the end of chapter 12. Chapter 13, A Real Date. Even better than the others, Ari said. You have a gift that none of them have, Issei said. Ari swung her tails with a compliment. She kissed him once more. Issei took her place to back to take her place. Issei took her back to her place. I had the time of my life, Issei said, as did I. If you ever want to go on another date, let me know. Deal. Ari went inside. Issa could hear her sing from joy. Oh, he loved her voice. He didn't want to hang around and seem like a stalker, but he just started to walk away and he was interrupted by Kuno jumping on his back. What the? Kuno? Where did you come from? Lady Yakuza appeared right after that. She sensed your presence, and once she does, even I can't stop her, Yakuza said. Why didn't you come visit us today if you were in Kyoto? Sorry, Kuno. I planned on it if there was something I needed to do. He looked at Ari's house with a smile. Yakuza knew that look. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you two were on a date. Ari was behind the door listening. Yeah, it was our first date together. I'm sorry for not telling you I was here. I apologize, Kuno. No need for that. If anything, we owe you an apology for interrupting your date, Yakuza said. No, no, it's quite all right. Our date has concluded, Issei said. Are you staying for a while? I can't, but I promise to visit. If you want to see me, then just let me know. I'm only one call away, Issei said. Okay, can we play with Big Sister and Ari again like last time, Kuno said? Sure, we love spending time with you, Issei said. Ari whispers to herself. If you're good with kids that aren't on your own, they just how good of a father you'll be one day. Dare I say, ours, Ari thought in her head. She got lost in thoughts about her and Issei having kids, but won't. 
But she won't be the only one. She knows that Kuroka likes him too. She peeked through the curtains and saw Issei letting Kono sit on his shoulders and Yakuza looking at her with a smile and a wink. Ari went eep then ducked from embarrassment. Yakuza is definitely a wing woman for Ari. Issei teleported home and went to bed. After a second or two, he felt something move on his bed. He looked over and saw Kuroka in her cat form. Hey Kuroka, were you waiting for me? She turns back to her usual self. Yup. So how was it? Kuroka said. How my date went? Between her and I? He said, so what about our date? You said you would. I'm free tomorrow. You? Sounds good to me, Kuroka said. We can watch a movie tomorrow if you want. Done. I'm, f I'm a free devil now, so why not? Kroker replied. The next day, they went on their date and watched a movie, had dinner together, and had a great time. Kroker was really happy that she was free. By the end of the day, they kissed, and at the right moment, they saw a camera flash go off. They both looked at the bushes and heard voices arguing in a loud voice. Why is the flash on? It's too dark for the photo without one. Issei and Kuroka quietly approach the bushes. Issei makes his regular hollow mask appear while Kuroka was blushing from embarrassment and slight anger at her ruined moment with Issei. He cuts the slash in half with it using Ascalon. The two, without a doubt, Irina and Gasper. They looked at Issei with fear. Oh, hey, Issei. I warned you, Issei replied. The two immediately bolted and Issei went full Vestralore and chased after them. Kuroka fell on her butt laughing. Good thing Issei can control his hollow powers otherwise the two would be dead. In the time Issei began to fall in love with Ari and Kuroka, he married them both in three years and had two kids named Naruto and Kuruma, who were inseparable. He had a number of kids with Kuroka, mainly mainly because she wanted lots of kids personally and to fulfill her duty to save her race from extinction. Her, his parents were eventually told about the supernatural, and they were very accepting of it. Rias and Akino were envious of Ari and Kuroka, but they knew they couldn't switch places with them. Issei starred in a new action series, full family entertainment, and it was bigger hit than the Grab and Dragon. The kids wanted so much to be as strong as him, they trained continuously and became quite strong. He made more than enough money to look after his family and provide with them the very best. And that is the end of chapter 13. Chapter 14, The Epilogue Issei had mastered his hollow drive in a year or so. He was so powerful that no matter how hard Volley trained or how strong he got, he couldn't match Issei in a fight. This eventually reached a point where he just gave up. His power was his power was the key to stopping the release of the Triexa. Rizavim Lucifer wasn't a match for Issei, obviously, as his power continues to evolve, but it was never enough to corrupt him. He always made time for his family. This is his hollow drive. He was known by many names, such as the Hollow Dragon, Crimson Hollow, Guardian Hollow, so many names, but he only went to by, by only, only went by two names, his own and Dregs, for they are two in one of after all. He taught many children that could accept their flaws and write above it. It worked for so many of them and became better people in every way. His hollow and dragon powers were also passed down to kids who were not classified as the new race in the underworld. Their parents taught them to control and master their powers. Many were afraid, but at first he won them over with kindness and not fear. Rius... Rias became the champion of the raiding game since Issei was her pawn, until he was promoted to ultimate class devil. He was offered to become a devil king, but he refused because he would rarely get to see his family. He introduced Medusa, it, Ma Matsuda, and Motohama to some ladies in the Fallen Angel and Yokai factions. The two were no longer pervs and they became better people and married a Fallen Angel and a Fox Yokai. They were there for Issei now and Issei helped them out. Sir Zex and Graithia still wished that Issei was their brother-in-law, but at last, not all wishes come true. Rias and Akino couldn't be his wives, so they settled on being aunties for the kids, as per Issei's, Ari's, and Kuroka's request. The same went for the rest of the ORC. Sir Zex and Graithia, his son Milikis, finally had little brothers and sisters since Issei was a brother to them. Orphus and Great Red would challenge Issei one day due to his power now rivaling theirs. Issei refused to fight to avoid ripping the very fabric of reality into nothing. They were skeptical at first but showed no hostility or intent or deception. B made peace with them. Great Red went back to the dimensional gap but would drop by now and check on everything. Orphus still in her little girl. Orphus still in her little gill form. Girl form would move in with Issei, but his very existence, including his wife, Ari, and his kids, would intrigue her to no end. Everyone was worried about her staying, but she meant no harm. She felt too protected of them. She bonded with them in Konako, 
would eat sweets together. Kuroka, Ari, and even Konako would help restore Issei's life force if his own includes Ravel as Bushup, Zenobia as Knight, Inglid as Leviathan, and as the other Bushup, whom he saved after beating Razafin, Rosvisa and Byoko as Rooks, Arthur as Knight, Volley eventually became really good friends with Issei and would drink with Sir Zex and Azazel, Albion and Drake let their rivalry go maintain peace. Lafay and Keo Keo didn't want to become part of the Parage since they were pretty happy with their lives. No fighting among anyone peace resides supreme. The human was eventually told of the supernatural world and they took over using a democratic democratic approach they were shown the truth of everything sign is truth and faith which weird since some of it was coming out from the devils and fallen angels but the angels themselves shared their views the humans followed their lead and peace resigned everywhere in the human world underworld heaven and eventually other mythologies humans were taught magic that fixed just about all of their problems they could create homes grow good easily and in seconds flight and teleportation removed the need for vehicles pollution and climate change no longer became a problem those with exceptional magical talent compensated from those who had next to none those who wanted to be like ev everyone else in the supernatural worlds joined them any conflicts between were resolved through peaceful means that should Ho but should hostility ever arise then a raiding game would solve the problem in case it, in case it didn't had if someone wanted war then Issei would be ready with his hollow drive because he is a hollow with a heart and that is the end of the story so I know the ending was somewhat of underwhelming but it was somewhat of a heartwarming story a little change of pace and I know it wasn't officially what if Issei finally lost it because I only read the first like three chapters and I thought it was absolutely amazing then things kind of slowed down but my next series is either going to be called what if Issei went solo or what if Issei went rogue now I'm going to probably put up a poll for it as well because I'm not exactly sure which everyone likes so far my channel members will probably be the official decision if you guys want to become a channel member it will be linked down in the description below it's the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. And thank you guys so much for 23,000 subscribers. It truly is a blessing. Thank you so much. Like, I really do appreciate it. And uh, I have a bunch of special series coming soon. So just expect a lot more What Ifs on Issei, What Ifs on Naruto, and possibly even my boy Goku because I love that man down to the bone. So let's try to hit 600 likes for this video, as I said before. And without further ado, pa 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 pa. Peace.